Good evening. Welcome to the Gloucester City Council, um, uh, March 26, 2024, City Council meeting. Um, in the interest of government transparency with regards to deliberations and decisions made by the City Council and according to open meeting law, since this meeting was posted as a Zoom meeting, this meeting is recorded by video and audio and will be conducted by remote participation. Well, that's an old, that's old language, oh well. Additionally, all votes taken by the city council will be by roll call. No, this is, this is all, it is an old template. I'm looking at the wrong. Start over again. This public meeting of the city council is recorded on Zoom with a link that is posted on the agenda. If you are calling in on a phone, you can press star nine to request to speak. If you are watching on a computer or device, there is a raised hand button that you can tap or press to request to speak. Please use either of these options during oral communications and public hearings to be recognized to speak. If technical difficulties arise and the Zoom link is interrupted during an in-person hybrid meeting of the City Council and a quorum is present, the meeting may continue as efforts have been made to reestablish the link. The minutes shall note the interruption. It is the finding of the city of Gloucester that no individual should be denied equal treatment or opportunity because of their age, ancestry, color, disability, including intellectual and developmental mental disability, family status, immigration status, gender identity or expression, military status, marital status, natural origin, race, religious, sex or sexual, sexual orientation. Um, this evening in attendance, we have um, City Councilor Dylan Benson, Valerie Gilman, Frank Majorta, Council Vice President Sean Nolan, Councilor at Large Jason Grow, Ward 3 Councilor Marjorie Grace, Councilor at Large Jeff Worthley, and Ward 1 Councilor, um, what's your name? Scott Memart. And we have um, also in attendance tonight, we have our esteemed City Clerk. Uh, Joanne Sinos. Uh, we'll do a flag salute. Oh, and Kenny Costa is also here. And we will have a flag salute and a moment of silence for Clifford Cook, led by Sean Nolan. Scott, Scott you're up. Do the flag. United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. I'd like to do a moment of silence for Clifford Cook, who ran our payroll department for a lot of years and was an asset to the city, uh, more especially to the city employees on finding ways to their financial issues. Uh, whether through credit unions or uh, monetary things that they needed help with and guided them through them with a pleasure to work with and to always wanting to help people. And Cliff will always be remembered as someone that was always there for everybody. And I'd like to call this moment of silence. Thank you. We will now have oral communications. The public shall have the opportunity to every regularly scheduled meeting to be heard under oral communications on matters not appearing on the agenda. Oral communications shall allow any resident and or property owner and or business owner who has a request or complaint of any nature relative to city business to appear before the council. Make their statement without debate and the city council will refer matters to the office, office of the mayor. Person speaking under oral communication shall be limited to three minutes each. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak? State your name and address, please. 
Is there a microphone there? There should be a microphone there, Hannah. Cool. You may have to turn it on. Hello? Okay. Hi, my name is Hannah Fonte. My address is 5 Becker Lane. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Hannah Fonte, and I have lived at 5 Becker Lane since 2005. I'm a lifelong resident of Gloucester. As a property owner, I pay Gloucester real estate taxes and for city water via my water utility bill. My road receives city services like curbside trash, recycling, and snow plowing. My road is a private road or private way with public access. I utilize city water via private water lines. I understand the city has a private road working group and a collaboration with North Shore Realtors to provide education to potential home buyers on private roads in Gloucester. This is a step toward prevention of future issues like my neighborhood is experiencing. I am here to support and commend my neighbor's collective ongoing work to fix the private water lines on Becker Lane, Becker Circle, and Whites Mountain Road. I understand their work dates back prior to my move to the neighborhood in 2005. I witnessed it myself this past winter as my neighbors worked in the cold to fix a water leak across from my home. This is not a skill set I possess and was awed at how the neighbors came out to solve the problem. As I watched, I thought, the people who live here and know how to fix these leaks won't be here forever. What will, what will the newer homeowners do including myself. I believe my neighborhood deserves improved infrastructure, city water lines, more fire hydrants, and road pavement to protect the water lines. This work has already started on Thompson Street, which is the main public road into our neighborhood. We now have a fire hydrant installed as part of a water improvement project. Thank you. Can we find a way to keep moving forward? maybe to extend the water line recently installed on Thompson Street. This would bring public water lines closer to our homes. Can we work together to improve our deteriorating roads to allow safety for all who use them, including the fire department and all emergency first responders? In closing, I thank you for your time and would sincerely appreciate the City Council's help with this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Do you want to hand that in? Put the record. Give it to our city clerk. <clears throat> You're going to have to speak into it a little bit further or turn it on. My name is James O'Hara, 55 Lexington Ave. I'm here to speak on a number of issues. The first being Rust Island and the waterline installation. The uh, neighbors, from what uh, they've informed me, the neighbors have been told that the job's gonna be done in phases. They are not uh, acceptable to that as it's gonna disrupt the neighborhood more than once. They don't see it as being uh, fitting for the neighborhood. Uh, it's going to be an additional burden to the taxpayers as well for mobilization, demobilization. And from what I understand, the water, the summer water lines, some of them have been disturbed or uh, bent through the construction. Also, the people of Magnolia and the Magnolia Pier and others who use the Magnolia Pier wish for the outhaul issue to be resolved. As a person, I maintain the pier for many, many years. Councilor Nolan knows this, the old pier. Um, I walked that pier today. That pier is two, two times, three times what that old pier was. That old pier had outhauls on it. When the new pier, when they cut the ribbon, there were outhauls on the new pier, the new pier that's in place today. Now they won't allow outhauls. They got an engineer to write a letter that said that the pier was not suitable. Again, that pier is two to three times what the old pier was. Um, these games have to stop. Allow the people, the people who raised more than 
$180,000 for a public project of their, their own hard-earned money. Um, I'd like to see that that gets resolved for this boating season so the people can enjoy the pier. Also, you people are coming into the budget season this year. As you know, many companies are laying people off. UPS has laid off 12,000 people. There are many other businesses that are laying people off. I hope that you take that into consideration when reviewing this year's budget coming up, that money doesn't grow on trees. People are hurting. With that said, private roads, as was mentioned by the lady in front of me, I live on private road. I'm estimating over $200,000 is generated in taxes, taxes alone. The road is in good shape, but there are some small potholes. The state law allows for the city to do maintenance on private roads. You, the council has constantly worked around trying to accept private roads. All people want is their roads to be maintained. Patch some potholes and people will be happy. But we continue to neglect the private roads for public use. When state law clearly allows other cities and towns to do it, we, we've, over the years, we, we've decided not to spend any money on private roads. So I hope that can change. Also, as a past city councilor, I'm getting calls that some of the present city councilors are not returning calls. As I tell Jamie, people- Jamie, time's up. Excuse me? Time's up. Thank you. Can I ask you to relax the, for another 20 seconds? Could 20 you seconds. do that? Suspend council rules? Thank you. 20 seconds. Uh, U.S. servants of the people, please return calls to the constituents, that's a part of your job. People call me, ask me what to do. Well, I, again, I shrug my shoulders. I appreciate your service, appreciate your time. Joanne, thank you for your service, enjoy retirement. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Name and address, please. Now it's on. Good evening. My name is Lewis Hubble. I live at 19 Becker Circle. With the most appreciated installation of the deep water line and fire hydrant up Thompson Street terminated at Becker Circle, I'm once again asking the administration for help with our neighborhood. Becker Circle is used year-round by many individuals to access hiking trails, biking trails, city-owned property, as well as houses of worship. It's truly a private way with public use. I'm asking the administration for two things today, please. In many correspondences with the neighborhood and neighbors, the administration has pointed out that no public money can be used for infrastructure on in private ways. In a recent neighborhood meeting attended by Councilors Nolan and Wardley, Councilor Nolan noted several instances going back decades where improvements were done by the city on private ways. I'm asking to please have a meeting between Councilor Nolan, as well as any other councilors that might have pertinent information, the administration and the city solicitor to review these instances to look the, at the legal basis that allowed the work to be done and how it can be applied perhaps to our neighborhood. At the bond hearing, which I was happy to see, our city solicitor, when asked by Councilman Worthley, took to look into how private roads could be helped, she said that she would. Secondly, I'm asking the administration to please direct the DPW and the engineering department to do a realistic assessment of what it would take to install the much needed deep water line into our neighborhood. Now that the access line already is in place on Thompson Street with the, co with the co cooperation and involvement of the neighborhood, it might only take a single line down Becker Lane ending somewhere on Becker Circle to access all of that area of our neighborhood. Our friends and neighbors living on White's Mountain Road, as frequently noted, have deeded addresses on Thompson Street, which is a public street, so the legal aspects for them should not be an issue, and just continuing the line up Thompson Street could accommodate them as well. I would ask that this assessment include the deep water line, the installation of fire hydrants as needed, and repaving the roads at its completion. I'm sure once an assessment is complete, a constructive meeting can take place and a plan to move forward created with the neighborhood and administration as partners. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to leave that with us. Thank you, Lewis. Muchly appreciated. And at this time, I'd also like to recognize Grace Poirier, our assistant city clerk, who's in attendance this evening. Anyone else in attendance in, in the auditorium?
Name and address, please. Hello. My name is Peter Johnson. I live in 33 Middle Street in Gloucester. And uh, I, uh, again, <laughs> going to bring to your attention uh, because I believe at one point or another you're going to get a request for a special permit for 33, now for 20 Main Street. Um, uh, uh, behind us, uh, we have one of the abutters. Um, and throughout, you know, we have been here a couple of times, we talked to guys, yeah, if I can remember all the things that we have mentioned, we talked about traffic and asked for, uh, you know, an evaluation of what that will mean for traffic through Ward 22. We talked about how um, the building itself is not fitting for, for the place it is and for a historic district. Uh, we talked about the impact it will have on, uh, on um, retaining walls and the properties that are around. Uh, I think we've also talked about some for both the zoning board and the historic district and uh, how they don't even really uh, follow their own uh, well, good requirements, if I'm going to call it that. Uh, and we talked about um, how they evaluate properties for our butters around and probably more things that we talked about. There's many concerns uh, with that uh, proposal. And uh, so now I'm just going to add one. Uh, one, uh, we know that... Um, um, downtown has been is a heat sink uh, there's lack of vegetation and, and trees and other and the little patch of trees and vegetation that exist uh, along mainstream or downtown is actually on that property that uh, are the developer wants to uh, develop and for to develop the proposal to remove that vegetation and those trees reduce even more um, the vegetation that we have there. And um, I, uh, I want to also know, like, when all this comes up, that, that also get considered. We, we want to consider all the concerns that we have um, truly uh, when, when that comes up here. That's really just what I said. I mean, it's a big concern for us, and not only us in our house, but every about us, and I know many here in Gloucester are concerned about that development and that proposal and uh, I really hope that city council and as our representatives that you that you will take those concerns into consideration and the facts that have been proposed and have been provided you when it comes to us that's really all what I want to say thank you anyone else in the auditorium who wish to speak at oral communications Madam Clerk, do we have anyone with a raised hand? Not seeing any, we are gonna close oral communications. And at this time we are going to have a, we are gonna recess for, not yet. Yeah. Well, I thought we'd recess and then do the accommodation. No, read the accommodation first. I thought we would read it up at the podium, but yeah, that's why I was going to recess and do that. But... <laughs> I'm going to do it right here. Like that. <clears throat> I don't want you guys standing for this. Well, this is accommodation for a very worthy um, city employee, outgoing uh, Joanne Sinos, who's been our city clerk um, for the last seven and a half years and has really served us admirably well, well and beyond um, what, what could be expected. And here is our uh, Gloucester City Council citation. Be it hereby known that 
to all that the City of Gloucester City Council hereby commends Joanne M. Sinos, whereas on April 5th, 2024, Joanne M. Sinos will be retiring as the City Clerk for the City of Gloucester. Therefore, we the members of this City Council deem it fitting and proper that there be inscribed upon our records our appreciation for the dedicated and valuable service of Ms. Sinos. Therefore, we express our sincerest gratitude for her 26 and a half years of service to the City of Gloucester with the last seven and a half years served as city clerk and our appreciation for her dedication while serving this body. Furthermore, we also take the, this opportunity to express our sincerest gratitude on behalf of the citizens of Gloucester for her dedicated years of service. Therefore, we wish the best for Joanne in whatever the future holds for us. Signed this day, this 26th day of March, 2024, and it's been signed by all of us. As our gift, we could uh, excuse you from saying something, but if you would like to, please do. I want to thank, um, I am grateful and honored to receive this um, citation. Um, it's been a pleasure serving the city for 26 years in the last seven years with the council. Um, it's been a pleasure working with the two new counselors and also with the former counselors and past um, councils. And um, I'm very honored. Thank you very much. Yep, um, we'll start at that end. Dylan, would you like to say something? Um, Joanne, thank you for your service to the city 20 plus years and being the city clerk for as many years as you have. It's a thankless, public service is thankless in many times and I know how hard it is to in your role and I wanna just thank you for your service and I wish that I had gotten to know you more and you've provided me so much knowledge being a new counselor up here and I'm so grateful for that. So thank you. It's gonna be hard for me to do without crying. <laughs> Joanne, you are just a blessing in everything you do for people. You are confident, you are a great leader, you're professional, you never lose your cool. <laughs> You've had to address so many unfunded mandates with early voting and all the issues with the polls and through COVID. I'll never forget the time that you were actually on the floor measuring the distance at Plum Cove School because we had to get the voting switched because of social distancing. And I showed up to help you and you had the measuring stick on the floor. Um, your versatility is just second to none. And you've really created a legacy for yourself. And I'm so delighted you're gonna have time to spend some time with your grandkids, one of them who is here. And I just, Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You were such a support to me when I was council president and through the last nine years, and we're so blessed to have you. We're going to miss you so much. Up oh, here. but I'm done. <laughs> I didn't cry, but I was close. <laughs> um, Joanne, you've just been a true professional, um, like everyone else here said, um, and they will continue to say. Um, what I enjoy most about you, um, not just your knowledge, but um, seeing you at every single public event, um, whether it was at the Boulevard or whether it was at Main Street, and you always had a smile, and you know, when people, someone came up to you, you always were like, sure, I'll ask a question. So no matter what, even on your personal time, 
you're always, you know, the city clerk and full of knowledge. So I wish you your best in retirement. Um, have fun with the grandkids, and we'll miss you. Uh, Joanne, it's been um, eight years of working with you, eight-plus years. And even you weren't the clerk the full time. You were still the clerk. And someone that I can come to and talk to in confidence and looking for procedure and issues that I need help with. And you are always there as for anybody else that I've ever sent. And as the city council is in charge of the clerk's office and the auditor's office, customer service is at most the most important part to us in constituent services. And you and your staff has treated the city of Gloucester with the utmost respect that they deserve. And the standards that you held your office to is exceptional. And I, I feel very confident that Grace will do the same. But your institutional knowledge from being around has been priceless to me personally on issues of private roads, especially, and asking questions of how we can get things done and not have the hiccups in the road. And I think that the, the value of having your experience that we can confide in to make sure that we don't do mistakes when we put things through and then also to have you here to make sure that when we do mistakes, you correct them as we do them so it's not a problem it has been unbelievable. And I'm going to miss you personally and professionally, though I'm still going to talk to you personally. But um, as far as the clerk, you'll, you're all I've known so far, and I love you for what you did. And uh, I'm sure you're going to have a great time traveling with your family and enjoying your family. Um, take care of your hip. Don't worry about any problems. And, and enjoy. And uh, selfishly, I'd like to keep you forever. Um, but personally, you deserve to spread your wings and live your life. You've done your job and you've done it well. Thank you very much and we love you. I'm just going to pile on a little bit more. Your professionalism, of course, is a given. Um, I think what, what I appreciate so much is, is your... Uh, wicked sense of humor. It's very understated. It, it can be very sharp and it's wonderful and I love it. And it was always, it was always present whenever we needed it. Um, I'm going to miss the fact that you put up with us mangy lot and you're willing to be patient and explain anything that we need to be explained. And, and uh, you know, if, if, if we needed an answer, we always knew it was Joanne that would have the answer regardless of who was in the clerk's office. Um, you know, you, you were the person we went to. So I really appreciate everything you've done for us, everything you've done for this city. I'm going to see you at Good Harbor Beach. You can enjoy yourself. Enjoy those grandkids. Thank you. So I guess we're going to have to get T-shirts made. WWJD, what would Joanne do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful for your service, and I am grateful for um, you know the, the short amount of time that I've been able to work with you. You are appreciated, the unsung hero in that corner office. Um, the city is lucky to have had you all these years, and I wish you great happiness and joy in this next journey, part of your life. Thank you. Joanne, thank you for all your years. I think I've had the honor of knowing you for all 26 of those years, and I'm better for it. You've helped me be a better city councilor now, and as you did before, um, your professionalism, as everyone has mentioned, is second to none. I appreciate when you're working with nine probably type A personalities that you have been so steady in doing your work. I think some people forget how important the clerk's office is and how busy it is. And it literally touches every facet of life from birth certificates to death certificates and everything in between. And as the keeper of our city records, you've gone above and beyond. Um, I'll miss you professionally. I'll miss you personally as well. Although don't be a stranger. I value your friendship. Thank you, Joanne. Joanne, what they've all said. <laughs> Nobody's mentioned dog licenses, but thank you for that as well. <laughs> Your leadership has kept all of us on track, and for that, we are in a deep debt of gratitude to you. Wish you well, and uh, carry on. Thank you so much. Joanne, um, so much has been said, and, and thank you for these few months that I've um, been given this 
privilege to be the leader of this uh, of this motley crew, and and you know, thank you for helping me through the stumbling, stumbling uh, and bumbling, and also thank you for those times that you know you were tearing your hair out, but you would still take the time to answer the question because there was so much going on, especially you know this year. Elections have been mentioned, elections recounts. Um, just so much demand upon that office uh, that is that it's unbelievable the amount of water that office carries for the city. And under your leadership, it's done a fabulous job. And we will certainly miss that leadership. And thank you for um, leaving a shining example for all to follow. And we will take a short recess for a photo op. Do we need to vote on that? Going out? No. <laughs>
The next order of business is confirmation of new appointments. Now I'll turn this over to the chair of ONA, Vice President Councilor Nolan. All right. First on the on the uh, list, we have Doug Parsons for the Board of Registers of Voters, um, effective three six twenty four, with the term to expire two fourteen. 27. Doug, if you'd like to come to the podium, uh, make sure the mic is on and introduce yourself with the address and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello. Okay. Um, Doug Parsons, uh, 1067 uh, Washington Street, out to Lanes Lanesville. Uh, I've been involved in the um, um, election system for a while. I heard they needed help, and I showed up one day and to the city's clerk office and asked if I could help, and I was assigned to be inspector. And from there, I went to uh, become warden, and then from there, I uh, got to be um, um, the um, excuse me constable and then, and then warden, and then I was asked to become the registrar. And uh, so I've been in this for a while, I think, having safe and um, open elections are important, and I always tell my people in in the precinct that I'm um, at that not only do we have to be unbiased and fair and open, we have to appear unbiased, unfair, open. So we will do some things that are inconvenient for us, extra steps, but just so that we it it always looks as though we're trying to you know keep the elections fair. I don't know what else to say. Excellent. Thank you, Doug. Is there any counselor questions at this point? All right. Seeing none, I'll read the motion. On a motion by Council Majota, seconded by Councilor Grace, the Ordinance Administration Committee voted three in All favor, right. zero opposed, to recommend the City Council appoint Doug Parsons to the Board of Registrars of Voters, term to end 214-27. And I so move. Second. Discussion? Councilor Gilman. I've known Doug for the nine years I've been on the city council, and I found him to be extraordinarily dedicated to our city. And whenever I visit him at Beeman when he's um, working the elections, he's, he's always visible and um, I'm very comfortable with um, with this appointment, so I will be supporting it, and I thank him for putting his name in the hat. Councilor Nolan. I've known Doug my whole term with being with the city and also through those terms watching him work. He had spent some time working in Ward 5-1 in the elections office. I've always found him very fair working with the people working with the you no know, promotion of any other candidates in the area and steadfast on the amount of feet from the polling places where he would be in charge to make sure no one held signs. Um, he's a fair and very likable person and committed to the city of Gloucester. He's been an avid um, volunteer through the clerk's office whenever the equipment needs to be tested or whenever something has to happen. He's always been there through the years, and this is, this is not just uh, from my point of view, this is from the clerk's office point of view as well. And I think that Doug would be a valuable asset to the city of Gloucester as a board of registrars. That's all worthy. Yes, I'd like to just add to the comments. Um, Doug, I've known you for a long, long time. I've been involved in a few elections in Gloucester. Um, your commitment to being fair is very important. I think it's also helpful for the public to know that there are three appointees to the Board of Registrar, including the city, well, in addition to the city clerk, um, one representing each of the two major parties, uh, no more than two of the same party, and you've been nominated from the committee, the Republican committee, I believe, and appreciate your perspective and look forward to working with you. I also want to thank you. You included your resume in the application and I'm impressed with your professional resume, which I didn't know about, but your commitment to detail is, it makes a big difference. So thank you again for volunteering. Other questions? Seeing none, I'll call the question. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. Uh, the ayes have it. Seven in favor, one opposed. Uh, Councilor Nolan. Uh, eight, eight in favor. Sorry. Doug, thank you. And he has been already through uh, swearing in, and he's ready to go. And Doug, thank you very much for your time and effort and continue support for the city. Thank you. All right, so next up, we have on the Gloucester Clean City Commission, Dr. John R. DeCordo, term to end 215-27. Dr. John, are you here? There he is. He's a retired MD, but I, I love Dr. John and his music, so forever it'll always be in my mind, Dr. John. Um, I'm John DeCordo, I live at 114 Prospect Street, um, I've lived there permanently since the summer of 2020, since the summer of 2020. Um, my roots here are only that deep. I've been coming to the city since 1985. My wife, on the other hand, has deep roots here. Mother grew up here. So I'm going to ride her coattails as a Gloucesterite. At any rate, um, I, I'm standing here in front of you because I responded to the mayor's request for volunteers for various committees throughout the city. And um, living on Prospect Street, I'm confronted by trash every day. Um, and so I said, instead of complaining about it and picking it up, I thought I would try to do something about it. Hence, uh, my volunteering for the Clean City Commission. Excellent. Thank you, uh, John. Uh, do we have any questions or comments from the council? Just on the so thank you for your service. I don't think we've ever had a medical doctor on the Clean City Commission, so uh, it's quite a, a resume that you have, and I think that cleanliness and health probably do connect in some ways. Um, my kids and I and a lot of people in the community have organized a cleanup event focusing on downtown the last couple of years. We've had almost 100 people volunteer. I'd like to uh, invite you when we get to that point to see if we can do that again, and I just want to thank you for volunteering. What I, as I understand, this hasn't met, or at least my review of the minutes hasn't met for four years, so it's going to be like starting from scratch, although you can ride the, uh, with the efforts that you and others have done in the time. past. Yes. Thank you again. Now, Tony Nolan. Um, when we get the quorum together, we have another person that's also new to the committee. Um, one of the first orders of business would be I'd like to come speak to you about a ordinance on banning NIPs in the city of Gloucester, because that's definitely a huge part of a challenge of clean. Um, so that's one of the first things I look forward to work with you. So with that being said, um, I'd like to read the motion. On a motion by Councilor Grace, seconded by Councilor Majota, the Ordinance and Administration Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend the City Council appoint John R. DeCordo, Dr. John M.D., to the city, uh, Gloucester Clean City Commission term to end 215-27, and I so move. Second. Motion's been made by Councilor Nolan, seconded by Councilor Grace. Discussion? Councilor Gilman. I'm just grateful that we're back and running again because this was always an important commission for us, and we worked all the time with one of our past heads in the team and we've missed it so i'm really grateful that you stepped forward and i will be supporting your appointment thank you councilor grow i, I say you're going to have your hands full pretty soon but thank you very much for uh, for stepping up it's uh, it's one of those tirelessly thanklessly uh, uh thankless jobs out there but it's really important and i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to your enthusiasm and we can do the nip things tonight, I think. Can I add one more comment, Mr. President? Certainly. Very quick. That's all worth like. You mentioned that you've only lived here for four years. You're a resident the day you move here, the day you start living here, you matter. Everybody matters, whether you've been here for four or five generations or a week or a day. So uh, I think the more people contribute, the second they start living here, the better. And I'm, I'm glad that you've stepped up for this. Thank you again.
a good one. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, nine to zero. Uh, so next up we have the Community Preservation Committee, uh, Sean Henry. He cannot be with us tonight. He's out of town um, at ONA. It was the same situation. I believe that Sean is well known to us, very respected in the committee, and I'm having a hard time believing that he's ready to step up for another committee, but it does coincide with the one that he's on. Um, so with that being said, without any uh, questions or comments, I'd like to read the motion for Sean Henry. On a motion by Council Majota, seconded by Councilor Grace, the Ordinance and Administration Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend the City Council appoint Sean Henry to the Community Preservation Committee, term to end, 215-26, and I so move. Second. Second. Motion made by Councilor Nolan, seconded by Councilor Majota. Discussion? Councilor Grow. Uh, just to uh, just to make sure people understand, Sean Henry is still a member of the planning board and is the designated member of the planning board representing that board as the on the on the uh, community preservation committee. Councilor Gilman, I'd just like to reflect back on when Sean Henry helped us by sitting in at all of our ward meetings that we had during the zoning uh, several years ago, and he was there to represent the person that could help us answer factual questions to make sure that we were always correct, always a team player. And I think that it's just one extra um, benefit to have him also serving on the Community Preservation Committee. So I'm looking forward to supporting this, um, this appointment. No other uh, hands raised. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, nine to zero. Next, Councilman Nolan. All right, so next up we have on one of my favorite committees that's been working very hard in the Human Rights Commission, we have Wanda Cohen, term 2N, 21527. Wanda, how are you doing tonight? If you could just grab the microphone, make sure it's on, and tell us your name, address, and a little bit about yourself. Is this on? Yep. Okay. Good evening. Hold, hold it up. Okay. Good evening. I'm Wanda Cohen. I live at 36 Old Nugent Farm Road. I uh, moved into that or purchased that uh, condo a year ago, June, lived in a rental for a little while before that. And uh, I had just returned to the United States from Germany, where I moved in 2014. Uh, prior to that, I lived in uh, Texas and Houston. And I uh, received my law degree, and I practiced law uh, for the United States for 22 years. Um, came back to Gloucester and thought it was a great city to be in again. Uh, my husband and I moved here when we first married in 1973. Uh, now we're back as newlyweds still, and uh, looking forward to participating in the community. I think my background and experience leaves me pretty well suited to this particular committee, and I share the the uh, council's concern that it's an important uh, avenue for the city of Gloucester. So thank you very much. Excellent. Thank <coughs> you, Wanda. Do we have any questions for Wanda from the council? Uh, Councilor Grove. First off, thank you very much for stepping up. Um, Human Rights Commission is kind of one of those, those, I think it's a little bit of an odd duck because it, it doesn't deal with zoning. It doesn't deal with, with uh, Clean City Commission, things like that. It deals with the issue of human rights and what constitutes the rights of humans. What sort of issues do you feel on the municipal level um, we should be looking at in terms of, of recognizing and, and solidifying the concept of human, human rights, equality, equity, and... Uh, my opinion is, having been away from the United States for eight years and returning to, frankly, quite a different country than what I had left. Also returning to the uh, Boston area, having lived in Houston, Texas for quite a while, that I think that uh, civics education is the foundation to everything that we do as a city, as governing and uh, supporting our communities and supporting our schools. So 
that's a particular interest to me. Uh, I don't know yet, because I'm new to this, what our authority is and how much we can reach out to other city organizations, departments, and schools. I look forward to working with Lauren and other people on the committee to you know, set a game plan and go forward. Thank you. Any other questions for Wanda? Uh, Dylan Benson. Um, Wanda, I want to thank you first for stepping up. This is an issue that I care very much about human rights here in Gloucester and across the world. You bring an amazing resume before you being le bringing that legal mind to the committee is going to be valuable. I have one question. What do you think we can do as a community to combat hate? I think combating hate is a matter of communication at the, at the fundamental level. I think that, that has, we have to break down barriers. People have to be willing to talk to people. And we just need to be out in the community and creating opportunities for our citizens to under, and our residents to understand that we are all participating in a great project here, which should be for the benefit of everyone. And hopefully that will help float a few votes. Hope that was satisfactory. That did, and thank you. And when you talked about education, that really rung true to me because education is a way for us as a community to learn tolerance and acceptance. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor Gilman. Thank you, Council President. One, one of the things that we did about five years ago, six years ago, is that we brought back Student Government Day, which is covered in our city charter. Right. And we initiated it at Gloucester High in partnership with the principal and the assistant principal. And it was a very successful day. So I'm hoping that we can get back to that now that COVID is behind us. And so maybe we can talk a little bit about that. But it was a success, and we should get back to that for what you said. Civics Excellent. are really important for our young adults. We need our young adults to, to be right behind us and be the ones that are going to sit up here in the near future. So thank you. Absolutely. No other questions. Um, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, read the motion. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> On a motion by Councilor Grace, seconded by Council Majota, the Ordinance and Administration Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend the City Council appoint Wanda Cohen to the Human Rights Commission, termed N215-27, and I so move. Second. Motion's been made by Councillor Nolan, seconded by Councillor Worthley. Uh, no other discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it, nine to zero. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you, Wanda. So next up for the Human Rights Commission, we have Lauren Riley Gove. How you doing tonight, Lauren? Not too bad. If you could just tell us, announce your address and tell us a little bit about yourself, that'd be awesome. My name is Lauren Riley Gove. I live at 42 Denison Street. I am a lifelong resident of Gloucester. I am currently the Gloucester High School field hockey coach and have been for the last 13 years. I have served on the board of the Chamber of Commerce for the last three years. I was heavily involved with the Gloucester 400 Athletic Committee last year. And just like one of the gentlemen who came before me, I, had, I am responding to the mayor's request for people to become more involved and join different commissions. And with my background in women's studies and alternative healing, and just my passion for humans, I figured that this would be a perfect fit for me to start my, my journey into public, um, what is the word? Thank you, public service. And I don't have time right now to run for an office because I have two small children that take up much of my time. And I see one of them is actually. Yes, she's very attentively. Shutterbug. Yeah. <laughs> it's right now, video mama. And Joanne, I would like to say congratulations on your retirement. And I appreciate you always dealing with my last minute requests for plant sale. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Excellent. So is there any questions? For Lauren. 
We're good to go. Very good. Lauren, uh, thank you for stepping up. I'll ask you the same question from a perspective of you know, being the Human Rights Commission. What what do you see as, as sort of the most pressing issues facing a board at the municipal level? I mean, obviously, there's issues that we can deal with at the state and federal and, and worldwide level, but it's just something that we deal with on a very local level. So what, what drew you to that and what sort of What's, what do you bring to the table in terms of dealing with issues that you feel are pressing? Well, I think that in an ever-changing world and in a small community like ours, there really has to be the recognition that things are changing and there needs to be that welcoming of all different walks of life, all different people who come from all different places. I think that we have a really unique opportunity in Gloucester because it is such a closed knit community to bring together all of these different people who are now representing our community. I think that the Gloucester 400 did a great job with that and in, in really celebrating different culture um, and cultural backgrounds. But I think that there needs to be that recognition and, and I would like to to kind of comment on the question that, that Councilman Benson brought up about hate. And to be honest, one of my one of my observations was that in the mission statement, the word hate is there twice for this commission. And I would love to switch that around to kind of what can we do to promote more love rather than hate on any levels. Um, because I think that in this world that we're living in right now, there is way too much emphasis on who hates who rather than how we can all be together and love each other. So I would love to, to kind of see that happen. Other questions? Councilor Majoita. Um, no questions, just a comment. Um, I've known Lauren, um, I believe throughout high school, um, you're always a few grades ahead of me, but what I've seen and known, and our kids go to the same school together, you always are respectful to other students, the faculty at Plum Cove, and you always treated me with respect, so you definitely have my support tonight. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate that. Councilor Benson. Lauren, I want to thank you for that, and that was very well said. Um, and my question, too, bring, broadening that if very, very briefly about how do we bring more acceptance and love in our community for people that we may see as different than us, but they are an integral part of our community. I think that recognizing that there are so many things that different people bring, right? Just like you said, and, and I'm going to refer back to the cultural day that the 400 did. It was such a well-planned and well thought out event, I would love to have something like that where we can really highlight the different groups, find out who they are, where they operate, how we can get together and kind of have representation from all of those places so that, you know, being someone who was born and raised in Gloucester, I have seen the wave, right? We've seen how culturally we have changed. And I think that there are so many people that have brought major things to the forefront. I also agree with Ms. Cohen that we really need to educate people. We need to start, and that's kind of one of my passions anyway, is how do we get young kids involved so that we erase that hate and it's not even something that's in our culture? Very well said, and, and I think you bring that experience working with young people, and I look forward to you bringing that experience to this committee. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you, Dylan. Council, go ahead. Council Gilman. Do you want me to wait until you make the motion to discuss if we, it? If you want to do discussion, yeah, we do the motion Okay, first. I'll wait. Thank you. Questions would have been then. So with that being said, I will read the motion. On a motion by Council Gray, seconded by Council Majoter, the Ordinance and Administration Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed to recommend the City Council appoint Lauren Riley Gove to the Human Rights Commission, term to end, 215-27, and I so move. Second. Motion made by Councilor Nolan, seconded by Councilor Majoita. Is there any discussion? Okay. Councilor Gilman. Thank you, Council President. So I will be supporting Lauren Riley for this position. Um, I've known her 
because I've been her ward counselor for nine years. Actually, before that, because you were thinking of running, I think, for school committee at yes. some point in the BC in that children. That's when I got <laughs> to know you. And one of the things that I really like about Lauren is that she inspires young girls to be the best that they can. And that's a big part of the Human Rights Commission is advocating for young girls to give them all the confidence that they should have. And I've seen you do that on the field hockey, um, at your field hockey games, because I love to go and watch. But even more recently, I've seen what you've done in getting all of our young girl hockey players <laughs> to really look up to our new awesome um, girls hockey team at Gloucester High. And I've seen them work the crowds and, and you know, selling raffle tickets and helping sell things. And, and you're always there leading that charge. And that's really important because that's part of human rights. And I really respect that work and keep up that momentum. And I will be supporting your appointment to this important position. So thank you, Val. Councilor Worthley. Thank you, Lauren. I'm honored to vote for your appointment tonight or confirm your appointment tonight. Uh, I think you forgot to add that you volunteered as a tutor in the Compass program many years ago. Oh, yeah. Right? I think that's a. Well, I was actually a paid, but still paid educator. <laughs> you mentioned that your public service starts now. You've been serving the public pretty much all your life. Yes. And I commend <laughs> you and thank you. Everything you touch turns to gold. So thank you for stepping up again. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. Other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, nine to zero. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Great addition. All right, Madam Clerk, what's, uh, what's next on our agenda? The consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to accept the uh, consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion made by Council Worthley, seconded by Councilor Gilman. Any council like to pull any matter off the consent agenda? Seeing none. All those in favor of accepting the consent agenda? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it, nine to zero. It's next on our agenda, Madam Clerk. Is the Budget and Finance Standing Committee report of March 21st. Way to you, Councillor Memart. Thank you very much. And I would just comment that it was very welcome to have Councillor Gross back in person at the Harbor Master's office last Thursday for our Budget and Finance Committee meeting. Glad to be there. Yeah, mobile and all. So we have a few items. Uh, we'll begin with the Harbor Master's office. Uh, the first item from Budget and Finance tonight is a memorandum from the Harbor Master requesting our acceptance of the Clean Vessel Act or CVA grant in the amount of $11,000. I'll go ahead and read the motion, if that's all right. Uh, motion by myself, seconded by Councillor Worthley. Budget and Finance Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that the City Council accept a federal grant under Mass General Law 4453A, a Clean Vessel Act pump-out boat grant for $11,000 from the U.S. Department of Interior passed through the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries. And this is for the purpose of servicing both resident and transient boaters of the city for the disposal of sewerage from vessel holding tanks, portable toilets, and shoreside pump out facility. The grant period is from March 21st, 2024 through December 31st, 2024, and there is an in kind match of payroll expenses. And I so move. Second. Sorry, we were over here discussing business. Motion by Councilor Memard, seconded by Councilor Worthley. Is um, the Waterways Board is having a meeting as we speak, so there's no representation there, but if anyone has any questions, I'm very familiar. Yep. And it's self, sort of self-explanatory in the motion itself. And this is a recurring grant providing services, so yes. this is uh, something that we've already pretty familiar with. Yes. No questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it, nine to zero. Uh, the next several motions are also from the Harbor Master and relate to uh, addressing some capital 
financial needs and moving around some financial resources within the Harbor Master's uh, funds. The first item is a 2022, 2024 SA number 14. Uh, and the uh, committee recommendation by myself, seconded by Councillor Gross, Budget and Finance Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that the City Council approve a supplemental appropriation, 2024 SA 14, in the amount of $46,000 from the Waterways Enterprise Fund, undesignated fund balance, retained earnings, or free cash. Account number is noted. And this is to the Waterways Enterprise Fund Purchase of Services. Account number is noted. And this is for the purpose of repairing Solomon Jacobs Landing due to storm damage occurred this past uh, spring, electrical repairs to the I-4C2 Marina, an abandoned vessel salvage off of Cressy's Beach, and for the purchase of new no-wake buoys and moorings. And I so move. Second. Motions made by Councilor Memard, seconded by Councilor Worthley. Discussion. <clears throat> Councilor Worthley. There's two quick things. For the folks at home, anybody who doesn't know what SA stands for, it's a supplemental appropriation, right? And I think this means that the Harbor Master's Office and the Waters Waste Board has run very well, and they run a tight ship. Um, no pun intended with the ship. Um, and we're in good shape, and we're in good hands. So I just want to make sure people know this is not um, anything other than we've managed the budget really well in that department. Thank you. They've managed the budget. But the budget really well. Any other counselors? This will be a vote by roll call. Madam Clerk. Aye. Council Nolan. Yes. Council Worthley. Yes. Council Benson. Aye. It's as cold in here as the harbor. <laughs> okay. Council Gilman. Aye. Council Grace. Aye. Council Gross. Aye. Council Grow. Aye. Council Majotha. Aye. Vote passes. The motion passes nine in favor, zero opposed. Councilor ben Benson, I think you're still in California because the harbor is a lot colder than it is here in City Hall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, off to business now, Councilor Memmott. 2024 SA 15, the committee, Budget and Finance Committee recommended on a motion by myself, seconded by Councilor Worthley, that. that uh, the City Council, um, we voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend the City Council approve a supplemental appropriation 2024 SA 15 in the amount of $11,000. And this is from the Waterways Enterprise Fund, undesignated fund balances. Account number is noted to the Waterways Enterprise Fund repair and maintenance uh, for the boat and repair maintenance. Account number is noted. And this is for the purpose of repairing, again, the Solomon Jacobs uh, cathodic protection system and to add a uh, winter heating system to the HVAC spaces in the Harbor Master's patrol boat. And I so move. Second. Motion's been made by Councilor Memard, seconded by Councilor Worthley. Any discussion? This too shall be by roll call. Madam Clerk. Councilor Memhard? Yes. Councilor Nolan? Aye. Councilor Worthley? Yes. Councilor Benson? Aye. Councilor Gilman? Aye. Council Grace? Aye. Council Gross? Aye. Council Grow? Aye. Council Majotha? Aye. Motion passes, nine in favor, zero opposed. 2024 SA 16, our committee recommendation on a motion by myself, seconded by Councillor Worthley. Budget and Finance Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed. To recommend that the City Council approve a supplemental appropriation 2024 SA 16 in the amount of $18,000 from the Waterways Enterprise Fund, undesignated fund balance, retained earnings, account number is noted. To the Waterways Enterprise Fund salary and wages, temporary account number is noted. And this is for the purpose of funding temporary wages for off season storm coverage and maintenance. And I so move. Second. Motion's been made by Councilor Memard, seconded by Councilor Worthley. And this, any discussion? This too will be by roll call. Councilor Memhard? Aye. Councilor Nolan? Aye. Councilor Worthley? Aye. Councilor Benson? Aye. Councilor Gilman? Aye. Councilor Grace? Aye. Councilor Gross? Aye. Councilor Grow? Aye. And Councilor Majotha? Aye. Motion passes nine in favor, zero opposed. Next item would be 2024 SA 17. Budget and Finance Committee on a vote by myself, seconded by Councilor Gross. 
voted three in favor, zero opposed to recommend city council approve supplemental appropriation 2024 SA 17 in the amount of $71,973 from Waterways Enterprise Fund undesignated fund balance retained earnings, account number is noted, to the Waterways General Stabilization Fund transfers from Enterprise Fund account number as noted. And this is for the purpose of transferring the remaining retained earnings to the Waterways General Stabilization Account. And I so move. Second. Motion to be made by Councilor Memard, seconded by Councilor Worthley. Any discussion from the council? Seeing none, this will too will be by roll call. Madam Clerk. Councilor Memhard. Aye. Councilor Nolan. Aye. Councilor Worthley. Yes. Councilor Benson. Aye. Councilor Gilman. Aye. Councilor Grace. Aye. Councilor Gross. Aye. Councilor Gro. Aye. And Councilor Majorta. Aye. Motion passes nine in favor, zero opposed. Item number three on our agenda from budget and finance is a memorandum now from we're moving from waterways to the veteran services and our veteran services director is requesting our acceptance of the veterans heritage grant award in the amount of seven thousand five hundred dollars and on a motion by myself seconded by Councilor Worthley budget and finance committee voted three in favor zero opposed to recommend that the city council accept a state grant under mass general law 4453a a veterans heritage program grant from the Massachusetts state historic records Historical Records Advisory Board passed through the Massachusetts Secretary of State's office. This is in the amount of $7,500 to support the rehabilitation of the Patriot Sanctuary for the purpose of restoring and preserving the space as well as an upgrade of the space with handicapped accessibility. And there is no local match for this grant. And I so move. Second. Motion has been made by Councilor Memard, seconded by Councilor Worthley. Any questions from the councilors? Councilor Grow. And it's not a question or comment. Comment. I just, I, you know, I'm just going to take this opportunity. This happens to be the the um, of the veterans department that's doing this, but I just want to point out to people at home how many uh, grants that our various departments uh, seek out and get for the sake of the city that are above and beyond what our budget allows. And every time that they do that, they're bringing valuable services and and uh, uh, funding to the city that. That is beyond above and beyond the the the, uh, the property taxes and the other forms of, um, of funding that we have for the budgets or for the city. So, uh, kudos to all of them. Um, I'm really grateful for all the work they do in that regard. Well said, Council Worthley. As I'd like to just add to what Councilor Crow said, um, there's also an in-kind contribution from the Department of Public Works to remove the uh, the wear the um, material that was ruined in the storm, and also I think it was Paul. Kruger, who donated a number of hours to help with getting this um, organized. So it's not necessarily a dollar number coming in, but it's something we should actually you know, recognize as well. Thank you. Yep. Other counselors? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Nine to zero. Item number four from Budget and Finance. It's a memorandum again from the Veterans Services Director, V requesting our acceptance of donations in the amount of $550. On a motion by myself, seconded by Councilor Worthley, Budget and Finance Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that the City Council accept a grant under Mass General Law 4453A to support veteran services in the amount of $550 from the following members and business partners within our community, and those are the Trinity Congregational Church, Ed Camo, Brenda Fears, for a total of $550, and I so move. Second. Motion has been made by Councilor Memard, seconded by Councilor Worthley. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, nine to zero. And in a similar vein, at number five from Budget and Finance, on a motion by myself, seconded by Councilor Gross, Budget and Finance voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that the City Council accept a grant under Mass General Law 4453A to support the Council on Aging in the amount of $894.73 from the following members and business partners in our community, and those are Barry McKay, Brian Sullivan, Jacqueline Dort, Peter Tybox, Doris Cole, Marilyn Grant, Jerry Favaloro, Constance Condon, and Sharon Day for a total of $894.73. And I so move. Second. Motion to be made by Councilor Memard, seconded by Councilor Worthley. Discussion from the councilors? Well, uh, Councilor Benson. 
Thank you, Council President. I just want to thank all of these generous donors who stepped up and gave to our senior center. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, nine to zero. Our last item, number six, from Budget and Finance from last Thursday, is uh, City, City, City Council Order 2024-008 uh, by myself. And this relates to the election of our city auditor for the term from <clears throat> April 2024 through April 2026, pursuant to City, city Charter Section 27A. And I'll read the motion. On a motion by myself, seconded by Councillor Gross, Budget and Finance Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that the City Council, pursuant to City Charter Section 2-7A, concerning, concerning the election of the City Auditor, elect Kenny Costa as a City Auditor for a term of April, 24, April 2024 through April 2026, and I enthusiastically so move. I enthusiastically second that. Motion's been made by Councilor Memart, seconded by Councilor Worthley. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Costa up to the podium. Not sure if you would like to say something um, in, in advance of questions or? No. Nope. Can everybody hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Kenny Costa, City Auditor. Um, through the chair, um, it, uh, for the last 14 years I've been working for the city. Um, it's been a pleasure. I've seen a, you know, a huge financial turnaround with the city when I came on board 14 years ago. Um, I know there was a lot of concern even just making payroll. Uh, we were on the DOR watch list. Um, so I knew that you know, there was a lot of uh, you know, improvements that I could help with the city uh, with a turnaround. And, and that's the reason why I took the job. Um, to be honest, because I, I wanted uh, to make change. I wanted to help the city improve its financial picture, its policies and its procedures. Um, and now we've had 14 years of positive free cash. Uh, when I first came on with the city um, the previous year, um, two years actually previous, there was negative free cash. Three years prior to that, the city had not closed um, its books. So the city didn't even know if it had positive or negative free cash. Um, so I feel right now with DOR, we're in very good standing. Uh, we're also winning awards on our financial reports. We've won six years in a row with our annual comprehensive financial report. Um, previous to that, we, it was a basic financial report. Uh, there's only about 40 communities in Massachusetts that actually produce um, such a report. So I, I can tell you that you know financially, uh, the city is doing well, um, also financial reporting. Um, the city is doing well. Um, as you know, we have various stabilization accounts. Uh, we have a capital building maintenance um, stabilization uh, accounts and general stabilization. Uh, we have an OPEB trust fund. Um, and also, you know, we're not too far away from being fully funded uh, in our pension um, as well. Uh, we're looking to be fully funded by 2034. So at that point, once we have a pension windfall, uh, we're able to divert many of those funds to OPEP. So, um, you know, it's been a big turnaround for the city uh, financially. And, and, you know, I'm proud to be part of the team, being part of the financial team. Um, you know, I felt, you know, myself, uh, the administration, um, and also John Dunn, you know, we've done a lot of good work, um, you know, for the city. So, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone from the administration who would like to speak on behalf of... Uh Mr. Costa. Uh, Ms. Jill. Hi. Yes, Mr. President, sorry. It's been an interesting evening. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you, um, Councilor Memhard, for bringing this appointment forward. Uh, Kenny Costa and John Dunn um, were an incredible team together. And as we navigate life without John, um, Kenny has been extremely supportive of um, the whole finance team and the administration and the mayor, and I fully support his reappointment. Thank you. Um, counselors, I'll start with you, Councilor Memard, if you have any questions. I've just had the pleasure and privilege of working with Kenny for the past eight going on nine years. Um, former finance chairs, Melissa Cox, um, 
Joe Shalino have all found it very practical and easy and, and educational to work under Kenny's uh, leadership in the auditor's department. Uh, he does an important job for keeping track of our obligations and meeting the, the state review and oversight to uh, keep us on the straight and narrow in terms of financial reporting. It's not always easy for our departments to comply fully and uh, the regulations change. We've transitioned into a new accounting system with a Munis software platform, uh, which has allowed improved financial management in all of our departments and across the city. And Kenny takes a great deal of the credit for initiating that and seeing it through into, uh, into full use. So I thank Kenny for his innovations and uh, his steadfast uh, financial controls, helping all of us to operate within our means and account for it properly so that the city and the state and the federal government recognize that. The kinds of uh, the CAFA re reporting that we do is some, just another tool of recognition that allows us to get better interest rates on borrowings um, with Wall Street due to our ratings. And uh, it all plays together in terms of an overall picture of financial stability and financial success. So thank you, Kenny. Thank you. I'll open it up now to uh, the counselors. Councilor Worthley. Yes, thank you. I think we all, I know I do, and I speak for the rest of the counselors too. We have a lot of confidence in you and your staff. Uh, you've trained people very successfully um, that work in your office with you. I think you have a tough job in many ways because you have to hold peers, department heads accountable. And that's not always easy, it's not always comfortable, but you've always been very professional. You've been prepared, you've been organized. You made our job a lot easier as counselors. I just want to note that we did get, receive an email um, on Saturday or Sunday from Saturday from the chairperson of the retirement board. Will we be reading that in the record, or do you mind if I read it? Uh, oh, feel free. It's short. It so. is short. It's two sentences. Um, so this is from the chairman of the retirement board, Douglas MacArthur, who's here tonight and has worked very closely with Kenny over the years with a very big responsibility. Counselors, Mr. Costa has always done his job and presented a complete and accurate statement of the city's financial conditions. I highly recommend Mr. Costa be reappointed as city auditor. Thank you, Douglas MacArthur, 33 Lindale Ave, Gloucester. So I think that's a, a anybody who knows Doug knows that as a retired firefighter, longtime union member, and now retired uh, retirement board chairperson for I don't know how long, Doug, but a long time, um, he comes with a lot of credibility. What's that? BC. <laughs> Before Kenny? Um. All right. So uh, I just want to extend congratulations and thank you, Kenny, and just keep doing what you're doing, even if it means sometimes being, you know, tough sometimes on peers to get reporting done and, and on time and things like that. It's making a difference. Thank you. Councilor oh, so Grow. Hi, Kenny. Uh, I, I'm glad to support your renomination. Um, I, I agree that. Uh, You've done a terrific job over the last 14 years. I was on the council when things weren't quite so rosy financially, and we were looking at, at negative free cash and, and cutbacks and layoffs and, and all. It's, just, it's certainly a, a lot easier to walk into Kairos when you're, when you're not facing the prospect of eliminating jobs, but actually looking at how to allocate free cash. Um, with the loss of John Dunn, of course, we also lost a tremendous amount of institutional knowledge in the, in the financial sector of our city. And, we're going to we're going to rely on you to imbue that onto whoever replaces him. Uh, it's going to be especially important, I think, to to get whoever it is, regardless of their qualifications, uh, a real true understanding of where we are financially, where we where we hope to go, and all that. And we're going to depend on you to do that. Uh, following on on Councilor Worthy's comments, I think it's imperative that you continue to reach out and work with department heads and departments to make sure that there's a clear line of communication, that there's no ambiguity about what's expected. Um, uh, from them, by you, and by you from them, uh, so that we have a, a harmonious relationship amongst those uh, uh, department heads as, as much as we can do. It is, it is a, by de definition, sort of a, a controversial, uh, not a controversy, a, a, a confronting thing by holding them accountable. But at the same time, we need to make sure that, that those gears move smoothly. But other than that, I'm looking forward to, uh, to your continued service to the city and appreciate all you've done. Councilman Nolan. Hi, Kenny. Um, thank you for doing what you do. Um, I'm going to sound a little bit biased here because uh, in my whole time on the council, I've been on ordinance administration. So my favorite department that we're in charge of is the clerk's office. That's who I work with. Um, I know all the members of the auditor's office. 
I can say that you've kept me personally in touch of everything that's going on and every question I've ever had. You or one of your members of your staff has answered them. Um, I don't get to work with you side by side, such as the budget and finance department, you know, more especially Scott, who's been there for eight, eight plus years. Um, but I do, however, really enjoy the fact that just about every year that I've been on this council, the city and you have been awarded, you know, medals and, and plaques for being at the top of your game and for keeping the city at the top of the game. And there's been a lot of work over the past, you know, 10 years, you know, or eight years through two different administrations that I've been with to bring a fiscal responsibility to the city while still trying to take care of the needs of people in every which way we can with a compassionate and conservative um, monetary value to it. And it's very hard to make people happy with also trying to support all of the background things, such as the pension. And 2034 is a, is a, a, a good number. Um, it probably would have been thought of 15 years ago as unachievable, but we're here now. And that's done through good auditing and good cooperation between the council and the administration to find a way of taking care of our requirements and what we need to do for our responsibilities for our constituents and our employees. So yes, I, I will be supporting you 100%. And thank you, Kenny. Council Gilman. So I too will be supporting you, Kenny. One of the things that I don't think we give enough credit to is the importance and the integrity of that document that is developed every year for the last six years. It's about 138 page, 146 pages. The information on that is so important. Every person that's a taxpayer in this community should read that document. It's on the city auditor's website and it's very simple. You can scroll through it, but you can see all of our accomplishments and what we've done to be credible financially. And we don't sell this information well enough. So Kenny has been the leader in getting this back in order and uh, along with John Dunn and, and their teams and totally appreciate that. But this document, I really encourage people to, to read to understand, to know, to be proud. I'll be posting this on my city council website for people to look at that link. And it's right there, out there. And Kenny, I appreciate that, your hard work. Also, when I was council president, you were extraordinarily helpful and supportive to me, because um, I'm not on BNF, but I, I am the first alternate, but um, most of the time they don't need me. But anyway, thank you so much, and I will be supporting um, your reappointment. Councillor Grace. I, um, I just wanted to say you have done exceptional work on behalf of the city, and it is truly, truly appreciated. Um, your integrity, your hard work, and I look forward to um, working with you in the future, and I appreciate your past, present, and future work for the city. We are lucky to have you. Thank you. Council Benson. Penny, I just want to thank you for your 14 years of service, and I look forward to um, voting on your continued appointment and I look forward to working with you as the budget process comes in. This is my first year. I'm a new counselor and I look forward to learning from your expertise. Thank you. Yes, that's to me. <clears throat> Kenny, you and I uh, started working together probably about 14 years ago <laughs> when I brought in the Waterways Board financial mess. And tonight we saw several um, fruits of that labor um, by having those accounts that we could actually make those deposits in. No, we could not. And, uh, and it's been um, actually, I've, I've always felt very confident um, whenever working with you that I was getting the right answers and that, uh, and that we were being led in the right direction. And I too was around, I was on the school committee, not the city council though, when our books were a mess and that affected, of course, the school budget. And um, it was very frustrating at that point. And it's very nice to, to ha not have that hanging over us and to have a, an accurate accounting of, of 
and the citizens deserve that and and the city council should be should be uh, responsible for for making sure that that happens and having you there is, is uh is an asset to us to make sure that that happens and i it's been a pleasure working with you for all for over a decade and uh, and of course neil say i'll be supporting this i'll call the question all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Nine to zero. Thank you, Kenny. Careful driving home. Next order, business, Madam Clerk. The Ordinance and Administration Standing Committee Report of March 18th. Thank you, Doug. No items? There is no items. Next is the Planning Development Standing Committee Report of March 12th. 20th, I'm sorry, gonna, March 20th. Uh, we got items. Uh, actually, we just have two items, and they aren't actionable by the full council, but I we do like to uh, announce them. Uh, we had two special event applications uh, requesting street closures, and the first one was for the Glen T. McLeod Cape Ann YMCA Fiesta 5K Road Race that will be held on June 27, 2024. So he's a good kickoff to Fiesta. So uh, put that on your calendar. And the second special event application was for the Gloucester Block Parties, which will be on July 13th, 2024, August 10th, and August 30th, 2024. Uh, they do not have rain dates. So those are the dates we are set. July 13th, August 10th, and August 30th. They're great events. Uh, if you don't come to them, well, that's just not acceptable. So enjoy them. Um, and that's it for, for us. Next order of business, Madam Clerk. This is the first public hearing, public hearing 2024-004, rezoning 2024-001, council order 2024-003 to amend Gloucester zoning ordinances, section 5.16.12, affordable component, and section 5.16.13, payment in lieu. I'll open the public hearing. Um, anyone who would like to speak in favor? Anyone would like to speak in opposition? Can you hear me? For the record, Joel Favaza, 28 Middle Street. Although I am an attorney in Gloucester, I'm speaking here as a citizen. Um, I want to first off applaud Councillor Groh's truly uh, true passion for trying to create affordable housing in this city. I think it's a huge need that we've taken too long to get started working on. I'm glad to see it's being worked on. My opposition is to the specific proposal in front of you. Um, first, I don't think it's very good civic planning or, or zoning drafting. The, the whole village district idea is that you're trying to incentivize dense residential housing by relaxing requirements. There are different setback requirements, lot area requirements, types of housing you can build are different. It's not supposed to look like the rest of the ordinance. And so to say, oh, we need to bring in this language that we adopted elsewhere in the GZO and bring it into this, I think is misplaced. This should not look like the rest of the GZO. It functions on its own. Secondly, the village district has been on the books for over 20 years, and it's been too difficult for anyone to actually put into use for that entire time. Not one village development has happened. Now, I happen to know this, I'm working on it uh, as the Merle's attorney, there's a village district or a village development proposal in front of the planning board in the preliminary stages and so you might have someone actually squeak through and create some housing out there and the city council is now going to try and make it even more difficult to comply you finally get someone trying to take the bait and do this thing and now it's going to be harder for them to justify the expense of it if this goes through and you may scare off the, this person who was the first person in 20 years to maybe pull it off also the requirements you're looking to adopt have not proven to be effective Again, these are relatively new requirements that were put in 2021, I think. And anecdotally, as a permitting attorney, I can tell you that all I've seen them do is turn developers away from creating housing. I have several anecdotal examples where there were going to be nine plus units built on lots of land, and now they're coming online as five or fewer. One in East Gloucester was going to be 10 $800,000 townhouses. 
the first of the five luxury houses that are being built instead to avoid this ordinance is uh, just sold for $1.8 million. That's directly because this language scared that property owner away from creating 10 units of housing to do five luxury units instead. Um, again, I, I just wanna say I applaud the effort. I encourage you to look yesterday, Burlington, Vermont um, made up to four units available by right in even their lowest density residential districts. And last year eliminated minimum parking requirements for adding dwelling units there. There are other solutions to create housing. Making things harder for developers is not gonna create any housing, let alone affordable housing. Thank you again for listening. And I wish you the best of luck with this. Anyone else to speak in opposition? Questions from counselors or any for up uh, communication, sorry. There are no communication. Questions from the counselors. For, for us, for the Well that'll come after the public hearing. No, I thought you just said questions. questions oh questions the, from the council? For, oh. for the opponents and proponents. You mean rebuttal? No. I'm confused. Questions from counselors for, for the proponents and opponents. Yeah, so my... Not for each other. No, I, I'm just counselor questions, and I would say we'd probably go to counselor Grow, where he's the author of this. There were no proponents to speak in favor of it, so I wouldn't be asking nobody. Go ahead, but um, ordinarily that would be after we have the, uh, the motion. Well, who would ask those questions? During discussion. Who would ask those questions then? If it's not counselors, so I'm saying it is counselors. Yeah, go ahead, ask the question, okay. but it's I'll, I'll explain later. I'll do my best. When Please, I'm getting thank at. you. Okay. Um, so, hearing the testimony from Attorney Favaza, is there a mechanism where, if there were an application before the City Council already, they would be using the current rules from the date they applied, and any change that we made while that application was in process wouldn't apply to that application, where I understand, I didn't know that there's an application for the planning board. I don't know if that covers them, sort of the existing zoning ordinance before they come to us. Um, do you have an answer if that would mean that they would sort of be grandfathered uh, in? So I would, that would, I would be much happier if Suzanne was here to answer that question. But my understanding is, is that that application, while it is, is being, it will be brought forward to the planning board. Uh, we are in the process of doing the, the zoning changes now, and the zoning changes that we we result with tonight will be the ones that apply to the project. Is that correct? Yeah, Joel. So, so um, the the reason that I knew about this the, the the language in this was because I attended a planning board hearing where there was a pre-application hearing, where they reviewed a pre-application but not an official application. So our actions would then trump whatever happens moving forward. And let's, I'm making the assumption that your idea of this didn't come because you heard an application was coming. It's like, this is a generally a good idea to work on, regardless of whether someone's applying or not. But is there, and I think that it was, I mean, Greg Cadmatoria says that we can't condition a zoning change to go in effect later. It's in effect the day we vote it. That's like correct. 30 days after we vote. Right. Is there any provision to, or recognition to continue our vote? Not necessarily continue the hearing, but continue our vote so that whatever's in place in the works can continue. Why would I want to do that? Uh, hang on. <laughs> I mean, because I'll, you'd want I'll to be respectful. You want to be respectful for the people who applied, given the current rules. Well, That's why you'd want. To. Currently, there is no application before the city. Okay. Oh, I thought there was one for the planning board. Now, zoning takes effect immediately. It doesn't have. It's not an ordinance. Doesn't it take take effect? Thirty day. Zoning. So the, this isn't your dog. No. Okay. When it passes. Uh, if we're going to have more questions, I'd like to have the motion so then we yeah. can have our debate. I thought the questions were part of the public hearing. <laughs> yes, questions are part of the public hearing process. Then the motion, then the yeah, discussion. Definitely. Council President, I just want a clarification. You know, I'm new here, you know. Um, just so you, so you're asking the communication, the questions are for the opposition or the proponents, propon the proponents or those against it. Um, that's correct, right? As I understand it. Okay. Yes. I had a question for the opposition, but um, 
And if, that, if I can uh, proceed yes, with that, please. Two is thank you for the clarification and thank you for yeah. that. So the opposition, you said anecdotal, anecdotal evidence. Could you provide some like hard evidence of why this would not be helpful, if that makes sense? Yep. I hope that like uh, my question was not very clear. It was gibberish, but. As to the question being as to why this adoption into this particular section would have a potential chilling effect. As a, so right now, the limit on the affordable requirement expires as a sunset for 45 years. So you get a 45 year protection where the, all the, un, the, the percentage of the units are deemed uh, restricted affordable and then they release. And so there is a long term financial viability projection knowing that at some point, half a century from now, this development opens up. And the, if the idea being in the meantime, new developments come online, they begin running their 50-year phase, et cetera, right? And now you're looking at these things are going to be locked down forever. That affects your ability to get lending on these projects. It affects your ability to offer these projects to people who might want to purchase them permits in hand and construct them um, for, you know, for their own um, you know, attempted development. And so... Anything that makes us a less bankable product or that holds a restriction longer makes us a more difficult thing. And the reason, anecdotally, you know, that I've seen none of these come through in the 14 years I've been doing this, the 20 years I've been on the books, is because margins are tight and even small things like this are sometimes enough to just take the scale and push it down onto the wrong side. Again, I'm not speaking on behalf of my particular client tonight as far as his advocacy for the, the project. He's certainly trying to make this work with what we think is coming down the pike. But as a permitting attorney, I'm just saying making things harder for people to build, period, results in no housing, let alone affordable housing. I, I don't, I just, I don't know, I want to cross examine, but I just want to ask. So you're saying, just so you're saying, you're saying that having, it in perpetuity could actually hinder growth. Is that what you're saying? Just so. Yeah. So this, uh, again, there are properties all along Essex Avenue that have been in this village district for 20 plus years, and none of them have been able to take advantage of this incentive, what's supposed to be an incentive to create dense residential housing along that corridor. And what I'm saying, I can speak anecdotally to at least one where you, if this passes, they might go, oh, you know, like, like that's, that's it. I can't actually do this. And so there's a punt. And certainly, you know, there's, there's a chance that four or five million and a half dollar houses get built up on that part of Essex Avenue. And that provides new growth tax revenue. And that provides usually people who don't use a lot of public services. There's a benefit to having high-end housing, certainly. But if the village development district is programmed to create dense residential development with an affordable component, making it harder to build that village is going to make it harder to see any of those units, let alone the affordable ones, come online. And you might just see five more, you know, mansions show up in Gloucester. He hasn't read his, he hasn't made his committee report and that I think would help you with these questions. We do questions after the motion is made? I thought we do yes. comments after. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I thought, we were questions. I thought the order was I know questions. that was the way it was done before, but the way I'm reading this is it's questions for the proponents and the opponents from the audience, not of ourselves. From the audience. Yes, from yes, exactly. Okay. I think I think to be fair, it's it's less clear because usually we have public hearings, we have a, a, a proponent and an opponent speaking, so I understand the confusion. Do you want me to read the committee report? Um no, first we have to uh close the public hearing. Okay. Do we have anyone online? All right, we're going to close the public hearing. Give it the committee report. Very good. Uh, on March 20, 24, on a motion to Council Grow, seconded by Council Gilman, Planning and Development Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that the City Council amend Gloucester Zoning Ordinance Sections 5, Special Regulations Section 5.16. Village Development Overlay District Sections 5.16.3, 5.16.12, and 5.16.13 as follows. 5.16.3, definitions. As defined by the Planning Board, affordable to persons or families qualifying as add very low income, 
shall mean affordable to persons or families earning less than delete 50 percent, add 60 percent of the median income for Gloucester using the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development HUD income guidelines that are issued on an annual basis for the Boston Primary Metropolitan Statistical Area, PMSA. Under 516.3.2 is defined by the planning board, affordable to persons or families qualifying as delete moderate add low income shall mean affordable to persons or families earning more than delete 50% add 60%, but less than 80% of the median income for Gloucester using the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban, Urban Development HUD income guidelines that are issued on an annual basis for the Boston Primary Metro, Metropolitan Statistical Area, PMSA. 5.16.2, uh, excuse me, 12, affordable component. As a condition of the grant of any special permit for a VDP, a minimum of 20% of the total number of dwelling units shall be restricted, delete for 45 years in the following manner. 10% of the units shall be affordable to persons or families qualifying as add, very low income, add, pursuant to the definition set forth in section 511.2 of the GZO, no more than 60% of AMI, and B, 10% of the units shall be affordable to persons or families qualifying as delete, moderate, add, low income, add, pursuant to definitions in section 5.11.2 of the GZO, no more than 80% of AMI. The method for employed for defining affordabilities to persons of low and delete moderate add very low income. Delete shall be defined by the planning board, which may enlist the assistance of, this is all being deleted by the way, uh, shall be uh, defined by the planning board, which may enlist the assistance of the city community development uh, department. The 45 year restriction shall be approved as to the form by legal counsel to the planning board and a right of first refusal upon the transfer of such restricted units shall be granted to the city for a period not less than 120 days after notice thereof by registered mail. The city may transfer that right of first refusal to another entity and add is defined in section 5.11.2 definitions of the GZO for the city of Gloucester and delete in its entirety 5.16.3 payment in lieu and add 5.16.13 reserved and I so move. Second. Second. <clears throat> Motion's been made by Councilor Grow, seconded by Councilor Gilman. If I discussion. Start a motion on the motion. On the motion. Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned in the question, the, the original incentive behind bringing this order forward was that I was made aware of the vill village development overlay district to, for the first time as part of that uh, pre review. But I noticed that in the language, the language is a lot vaguer and, and different than our 511. Uh, inclusionary zoning ordinance. And in my view, I feel that there should be a consistency of language when we, ad when we address the issue of required affordable housing construction. And that there were provisions in there, especially the, the uh, 5.16.13, that were sufficiently vague and undefined. And it, it really spoke to a fact that this was, this was written well over 20 years ago. And I don't think that the focus on calculating how this was going to fit in with the rest of our ordinances was, was considered. I think 511 uh, does a really good job of defining the uh, latitude of, of the expectations for affordable construction. Uh, it defines how we determine the payment in lieu process, which I think is also something that was very vague in that process. I mean, pr previous to 511, the affordability in lieu payment was, was very uh, flexible in its interpretation. I think that uh, despite the suggestions to the otherwise that this actually clarifies exactly what it is we expect. It raises the threshold in one regard from 50%, which is a more difficult threshold for a developer to, uh, to achieve to 60%. I did think that the sunset clause, the 45 year uh, sunset clause was again, inconsistent with the spirit and the intention of 511. Um, you effectively have a lottery ticket in 45 years where you go from a property that has, has maintained its its commitment to being set at an affordable rate suddenly on the 45th year and one day becomes full market value. And I think our intention with the with the inclusionary housing ordinance is that is a that is an in perpetuity ass ass assignment. We, we don't have a sunset clause on our 511. Um, I do know that some 40B projects have a 30 year sunset clause. That's fine. That's a state. But we've, we've intentionally uh, made it so that our affordable housing is done in perpetuity.
for a reason. And I think it makes sense that our zoning ordinance has consistent thresholds for these, these, these calculations. Um, the planning board agreed. They, they voted six and unanimously to approve this. I think they agree that consistency in our ordinance language is important for the sake of understanding what we're getting ourselves into in each of these projects. I think there, you know, there are incentives for density and for, for um, other incentives within the village development overlay district. And uh, simply because somebody hasn't brought up them before, I don't think it's because of the affordability clause. There are other issues to deal with with developing that area. Um, but I, I feel strongly that our, our level of consistency within our ordinance is important. Council Worthley. Thank you. Again, I do think the questions should have come before we close the close public hearing. And that's what it says on the list if you look at the- Duly list. noted. Well, I mean, it's, it's on the list that you that the clerk's office produced right here. Questions from Councilor. Fully noted. Okay, I'm just trying to follow the order here and not make any mistakes. Um, so I have questions that would probably have been helpful to maybe have Suzanne Egan here to ask. Um, and I could have asked them in advance, but I didn't have time to prepare these. I do wonder, is the payment in lieu change just for the village district part, or is it for the entire city? No, it's, it's, meant, to, it's meant to reflect what we have in 511. So we have an in-lieu payment methodology that is in place in 511 in our inclusionary housing zoning. The um, eliminating the 516 and, and referring to 511 puts it back into the definition of 511. So you're not eliminating payment in lieu? I'm not. You're saying for village district section, it's the same, it, it's by the same definition as 511. Okay, so again, it's bringing consistency to the ordinance. I appreciate that. And then on the 45 year scenario, um, I just want to understand this right. So if I qualify under these uh, thresholds and I buy uh, the affordable unit in one of these buildings, I live there for 45 years, or I own it for 45 years, I guess you could have different family members live there, right? Um, but they will okay. never benefit from the potential market growth um, proportionally, right? Correct. Uh, Anybody who takes over an affordable unit has to qualify for that affordability. So. Uh, your 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 um, your equity will grow in a in a in a slower rate than it would necessarily um, in a, in a straight market rate, but at the forty five mark, boom, it becomes a market rate unit. So if I live there for forty five years and I sell it under your change, it, or I don't think, hang on, it's not your change. This change, it means that I sell it. It would need to be affordable still at sixty percent AMI or eighty. So that means the person who buys it can, can get it if they qualify from the bank standpoint, right? But I, okay, let me just, I own a house, I buy a house for 600,000 and it's worth a million, making this up for numbers, 60%. Maybe I'm not understanding it. And then in 45 years, I have to sell it at 60% of the value? No. So you buy, so let's qualify. say you qualify as a, as a very young person. Yep. And you 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 get in, you either buy or rent, whatever the whatever the arrangement mm -hmm. is. Let's say it's a buy. You would buy that house at a reduced rate, a significantly reduced rate. In fact, if you look at for, numbers, for example, I'll, the the 116 East Main Street project, which was highly contested, but we ended up preserving one one affordable unit in that. The market rate for those those condo those townhomes was over nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars. My understanding when it went up on market for the affordable rate was that it was closer to 232. Okay, that's a significant difference. If I buy at 232. So you buy at 232 and you live the right, right old age of 45 years older than you are and you sell it. When you sell it on that 45th year and one day, it is no longer covered under the affordable housing thing. So you benefited from the low cost for that 45 years and then on 45 years, one day, you sell it at market rate. With your change, I can only sell it at? You could only sell it to somebody who qualified at the AMI of 80% or 60% at that point. You continue the affordability aspect of it in perpetuity. Thank you for explaining yeah. that. Appreciate it. Anybody else? <laughs> but you do get 
it does appreciate. It does, you know, absolutely, because within 45 appreciate. years, it's not going to be, it's going to appreciate at, you know, whatever the qualification levels are, will continue to rise as income rise. So it's not, it's not that it doesn't appreciate income it, 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 or equity. It, does, it continues to gain equity. It's just that uh, at that 45th year in one day, it springboards from being at 60% AMI or 80% AMI to 100% AMI. So maybe, I'm sorry, for, this is not me trying to stop it. I just want to understand it. So if I get qualified at that point 45 years ago and I'm going to sell it, I can't sell it for market value. In, not if with, you purchase it at, at a reduced, re, at, at, at a, at a, at a debt-defined affordable rate. And does the council regulate that? No, that's done through the Community Development Department. Wait, so the Community Development Department would have someone, like, if you list it for more than it should, they'd know to, like... So yes. Who does that? The Community Development no, the Department. department? Is there a person that's just, I guess a... Okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. All, all, afford all designated affordable housing is, is monitored through the Community Development Department. Thank you. I know that. Councilor Majoida. Jason, with these, after hearing what um, Joel said, and do you believe that it could potentially hurt developers into <clears throat> developing affordable housing with these increases based on 60% that you added, changing it and well, changing the wording? In, in, in truth, we've actually raised the threshold on that one. The, the threshold was 50% and 80% AMI. It is now 60% and 80%. And... The, my understanding, uh, and if, uh, I imagine if Greg Kadimatori was here or somebody on the planning board, that uh, a lot of that has to do with, with again, borrowing and making things uh, viable from a, from a lending perspective, that 60% is much better than 50% in terms of bankability. The, when you get lower than 60%, it, it is largely uh, uh, entities like hous Housing for uh, Humanity and or um, what is it? Habitat. Habitat. Thank you. Okay. Habitat for Humanity and and uh, other har harbor light that can, can leverage grants and other kinds of funding, state grants, federal grants, and 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 funding to go below the sixty percent threshold down to thirty percent. So we're actually easing the burden while we're taking the forty-five year sunset clause. We're actually easing the fifty percent to sixty percent threshold to make it slightly better in the in the in the developer's favor. That answer your question. You know, you look confused. I, I, I do, and and I, I I want more information on this, and I and I really wish that um, you know, we could have got Greg here or Suzanne here um, to potentially answer more questions. And I'm considering making a motion to do something, but I I'm still just trying to listen to what you have to say or what others have to say before I make a motion. So I'll go that. back and, and say that there's three fundamental changes. One is that we raise the threshold from 50 to 60 percent. That actually is an, that's a benefit for the developers because they don't have to make the 50 percent threshold anymore. Uh, we are eliminating the sunset clause, which I consider to be the lottery ticket clause. And three, we're, we're creating, we're, we're eliminating the, the vague language of 516.13, and we're putting in place the very specific language of 511 in terms of the in-lieu payments that can be made or whether they can be made. Now, certainly in, in, in developments over 10 units, in-lieu payments aren't an issue because you can't have an in-lieu payment on, on projects over 10, 10 units. That, that, that's, part of, that's part of 511 too. 511, sorry. Council Member, I don't want to complicate this discussion, but I think it's important to draw a few distinctions that maybe would help clarify. Please. Um, one element is is the income that somebody is making when they apply for ownership of a home like this. Mm -hmm. So, in, in one sense, it, it's a form of rent control because if, if they buy if if they have a low income, they qualify to buy the one sixteen East Main Street uh, apartment, uh, townhouse, whatever it's called, and they're paying at a, a, a at a reduced rate for that. Right. And over the next 10, 15 years, their income rises, above, rises higher. They don't lose their house. They don't lose their house. So they, they have, they still control their home, even though it was 
That's correct. Reserved initially. It's not until they go to sell it again that they wouldn't. Correct. So you know the the distinction is between the value of the house that you can sell it for and what you are making for income when you initially purchase it, and how that changes or doesn't change over time. If you do buy a house, it, it, to your point, if you buy a house at a at a reduced rate based on your your AMI, your your average median income, you're absolutely right. The next year after you qualify and you get this house. You could get a new job, and you could be making well above the AMI, but you've qualified yep. for the low AMI. I mean, that's that's great. Nobody's trying to 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 uh, to change anything involving that. But when it comes time to move on, you're sort of set yourself kind of a. a well, I think I would see it as a moral obligation to pass on the benefit that you've had with the eighty percent AMI or sixty percent AMI. You've there, got to good reduce examples rate. of this on Haven Terrace, for example. That's correct. Yeah. Where, where as people make more money, they're able to move on to a different house. And that's the in, intention behind it. In, in this case, because yeah. it's a reser re reserved home within a project, it could be a very considerably more valuable potential house, if not for the reserved low-income qualification. Right. Just, just clarifying. It's, it's, it's interesting. It just you have to think it through, projecting it forward. I mean, which the, is what the, you're doing. The idea is to get people in homes, yep. and and if they are so fortunate enough to have. Increased income after the fact, great. But the intention, you know, obviously, sort of the American dream idea is you get into a starter home, you 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 work your way up until the until you 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 live in an enclave, and uh, then you 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 know you pass that on. That's not necessarily the case anymore. You know, a lot of people get into a house and they stay there for many many years. But you you again, you sort of make a moral contract with with the gener the next generation coming up that that house will eventually be available to you at a reduced rate from what the market rate goes. And that's my intention for removing the sunset clause. That's what Gilman. So I don't want to get in the middle of whether we can ask questions or not right now, but I do have a question with the permission from council president. Who do you have a question for? Through you to yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. this is what that so, dines so my, for. So my question is, um, at the public hearing that the planning board had, were there any developers or contractors or builders that were there that spoke in opposition? Because you said you you had an eight to zero vote in, Six to zero, yeah. in favor. So I, I you, wasn't there. Okay. But the, the it, was, it was a unanimous vote. I don't know if they had anybody in attendance at all. Okay. To be honest with you. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say that um, <clears throat> I think it's, I have to disagree that uh, the 45 year um, restriction would have any um, impact on a developer investing because no developer is going to hold on to a property for 45 years. That's just not in their business model um, unless it's a rental. And then they're still going to turn it over as, as quickly as possible to, to make their their assets liquid to be able to then reinvest and move on. So I don't think that this is a hindrance whatsoever to development. I think it's a fairness issue as far as passing on the, um, the leg up that you got. And I think that this, this is, uh, these are very good changes. They're, they're very, they're minor. Um, you know, there are a couple of definition changes and the, the big changes is, is the 45 year. And, and I don't th see that, you know, being a problem for a developer. Mr. President, may I ask a process question? We've closed a public hearing where I thought was a question, but we'll figure that out. Um, but is there a way to continue this so we can ask questions, maybe send them in advance so we could, in two weeks, have some questions from Suzanne Egan or Greg Catamatori? No disrespect to you. I want to make sure we all know what we're voting on. Oh, we have a motion on the table. Well, I'm just asking you if we were to continue. We have a motion it, on the table, so that Okay, I can make a motion to continue. And then I can make a motion to continue. But if we continue it, do we have an opportunity to ask and have questions answered at the next meeting or have some Public present? hearings closed. But yes, the city, city staff can, can be here, and the, and the city staff would not be during that question period either. They would be here for this deliberation period. So questions are, in my opinion, are part of a public hearing. That's why it says it in this list that we keep all the time. All right, but well, I, I respect I, that. We, we've already, we've already, um, I, I understand your question. Well, 
Okay, so if I had asked questions during the public hearing, I would have made a motion to continue that so we can ask questions two weeks from now. Council of the President, Councilors, questions by the city council is this to either side or to city administration. So, or the hearing is closed. Be, yes, and that's questions to either side or the administration, not, right. not questions to us. Well, I had questions that my questions were for the administration, uh, and I appreciate Council Gore was able to. You actually did answer the questions ably. I appreciate that. Um, but if we were to ask legal questions, we don't have our representative. Right. Represent so, but you close the hearing, so if we were to continue it, we wouldn't be able to open it again. Exactly. Which means it was a mistake to close the no, hearing before it's not. Before questions. That, that's your opinion, but oh, just listen, we just I'm have, just following okay. the rules of procedure, Jeff. Wait, the rules of procedure, hang on, let's just if we want to play this. No, game, I'm not gonna argue kind of, this right now. No, wait, hang on. Make you your just motion stated no, the fact that I'm overruling have, you right now. We're not gonna on discuss what? on discussing this rules of procedure right now. This is not But didn't she just say the questions come before the public hearing is closed? That's what I heard. Yes, questions. Questions by city councilors to either side yeah. or city administration. And we don't have the city administration here. But you said we can't ask the questions. Let's get the motion on the can table. We can also ask the questions of city administration afterwards, too. But you closed the public hearing. So I just want to know, if we make a motion to continue, can we ask questions? Yes, we can ask questions of the city administration. Okay. Yes. Then absolutely. I move that we continue this motion. Is an amendment? To the motion to continue, made by Council Worthley, seconded by Councilor Majorta. Discussion. All of uh, Councilor Nolan. I understand completely what Jason's doing here, and I, I agree with it. Um, I do think that, in fairness to some of the questions that have been asked, um, I will support a continuance until we have city legal. Um, to be here, just for fairness of the questions. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Grace. Um, I just agree with Sean. You know, I understand where both of you are coming from, but if we are, are able to ask questions of administration and they're not here, um, it just seems like it, if it's supposed to be part of the process, it should be part of the process. So just to clear, I, you know, I like what Jason wrote. I just want to be able to ask certain questions. Um, but with the public hearing closing, we would not be able to ask questions to anybody who proposed the amendment to the opposition. Correct. That's correct. The, okay. Councilor Grow. Uh, just on the motion, um, I don't honestly know what what further questions you're going to get that are going to be different than what you've already asked uh, and, and and we've had answers to. I mean, if you're not happy with the answers, I understand that. Um, but I, I think that, as Councillor Nolan said, or as Councillor Gross has already said, these are relatively small, simple changes to the document to bring it into a line with, with existing language in the inclusionary zoning ordinance. So um, I'm not sure what, what benefit it is to wait two more weeks. Um, so, now, on, on the motion to continue, I, I'm not sure what questions there are. This is pretty straightforward. Um, so, it, I, I just don't see the purpose of it, but it's to the will of the council. Councillor Benson. I, I agree with, um, with you and Councillor um, Grow. And I just, Councillor Grow, I just had a question for you, if I can. If I can, asking just clarification about the appreciate if the home value with the forty-five year clause, will the home value there still will be value, correct? Like say someone buys home and then forty-six years later we get rid of the sun clause, but they sell it, they're still gonna get some value. They say they bought it for two hundred and fifty, they're gonna get some value if that's if I'm trying to making well, that correct. If I can answer a question that's not on this particular motion, I will say that what happens is they, they will get the 100% value as opposed to the appreciated lower 
reduced value that one would get if they were qualified for the, that purchase. So if they hold it, they've gotten the benefit of the uh, qualifications for that 45 years. On day 45 plus one day, they get not only all of the equity that they've already done, but the added bonus of the fact that it's no longer required to be sold to somebody who qualifies. So it brings it up to full market value. On the motion to continue, if I may. One more. I haven't even talked on the motion. Oh, yeah. to oh you haven't? No. Didn't you? Oh, Frank made it. That's right. right. <laughs> you seconded it. Yeah, I made the motion. Oh, you right? made the motion. We, so. The motion on the table is to, I did make it, to continue. I haven't spoke on it. Um, I'm not against this. I, I just want to make sure that this is not a stall tactic or anything. I want to be certain of what I'm voting for. And I have a few questions. And I'd like to pose them, and I may think of others. Um, I will email them to the city attorney. Or to Grant we'll ask the city attorney to yeah. be here. If this, if this passes, we'll ask the city attorney Yeah, and I'll be, be happy to provide those questions in advance so they're prepared. And I'll be prepared to vote. Um, and I'm not against it. Just, I just want a few more questions I'd like to hear from the city's attorney. So that's why I made a motion to continue, and I hope that we will accept that. Councilman Memart. I was just going to say that I, I do not see anything new being gleaned from waiting and putting this to the city attorney on the specific uh, proposals for, before us for change. So I, you know, I don't have a problem with proceeding to vote now. Any more discussion on the amendment to continue? Councillor Benson, on okay. the amendment. Yeah, this is on the, so thank you for allowing me to ask that question. Um, I don't see any reason to delay. I think that this is, as you said, Council President, this is pretty clear cut. It's minor changes. Um, I don't know what more we're going to get from that, um, asking other folks to come in. Councillor Majoita. I I just want to disagree with what comes about. I think that, you know, if we do have certain questions, um, I think we've talked about this. We always want clarity. We always want to make sure before we vote, whether it's a small change or a big change, it's still a change that could affect something or someone and to wait two weeks, 14 days, whatever hours, how many minutes. Um, I think that's not a problem. And I just hope, I just want to say that. Anything else on the amendment? All, right. All those in favor of the, or right, let's do roll call so we get an accurate count. On the amendment. The amendment to continue the matter, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. So the. Specific. It would have to be. To say that? Yes, it's, it would be to the next city council the meeting. The next city council meeting. April yes. 9th. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, Councillor Memhard. Oh. Councillor Nolan. Yes. Councillor Worthley. Yes. Councillor Benson. No. Councillor Gilman. Yes. Councillor Grace. Yes. Councillor Grow. No. I'm sorry. I, I skipped you. Sorry. Councillor Gross. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. And Councilor Majotha? Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four, five in favor, four opposed. All motion passes. Yes, to continue to, to continue. April 9th. And, uh, and we'll continue with the original motion then. Council President, can we, yes. have a, can we make a motion to have a five minute recess to stretch and move? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We need a, do we need a recess? Well, we don't, we, we don't need to vote on the motion because it's voted to continue, right? So right, just, we don't, yeah, we're yeah, done. We're not voting yeah. on the motion. I do need a minute. All right, five minute recess.
Next order, next order of business, Madam Clerk. Next order of business is the second public hearing, public hearing 2024-006, City Council Order 2023-053, to amend Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Article 5, Stopping, Standing, and Parking, Division 1 Generally, Section 22-173, Operations of Trucks, Trailer Trucks, and Other Commercial Vehicles by adding Witham Street, from the end of nine Witham Street, parentheses, oil trucks to Thatcher Road. No tanks. Oil tanks, I'm sorry, to Thatcher Road. No vehicles over 15,000 GVW except for service vehicles. Open the public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak in favor? Yeah. Councilor Memai, would you like to speak in favor of this? This motion has been cleared by the uh, Traffic Commission. It was at the request of the Witham Street Neighborhood Association. as one means to address uh, speeding and heavy vehicle traffic on what is, for a good part of it, a residential twisty road coming out, um, out to Thatcher's Road. Uh, there are three or four commercial industrial properties at the uh, Eastern Avenue end, and this has been adjusted to reflect their uh, access. But after, after the oil tanks, as stated here, the uh, neighborhood is strictly residential, and it is a very twisty, turny, narrow road with limited uh, lines of sight. And uh, uh, there have been a number of accidents from vehicles un speeding unnecessarily on their, way, on their way down the road, getting out to Thatcher's. And this uh, motion reflects the uh, neighborhood's concerns and as one step towards addressing them. Thank you. Anyone to speak in opposition? Oh, anyone else in favor? Sorry. All right. Persons who'd like to speak in opposition, come to the podium. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Councillor Robert Kennedy, uh, 30 Mount Pleasant Avenue. Been a Gloucester resident my entire life, 58 years. Um, I've been working out of Witham Street since 1995. I own my own business. I've never seen ridiculous traffic on Witham Street. Um, I use it every day, every day. I drive a big commercial truck. I own several of them. My son runs a business there. Um, I've never seen a problem. I don't understand what the president's is to post a road, a public road, restricted to vehicles that are bigger than a pickup truck. Um, if you set this precedent, then the next road's going to become set that way. We can't use Barn Lane. That's private. So what's our alternative? You're, you're handcuffing the city. You're going to stop public posting every road in the city of Gloucester a non-commercial heavy usage. Okay, I'm exempt because I'm an oil man, but if I don't have a delivery on that road, does that mean I have to drive all the way through the Eastern Avenue lights to get back onto Eastern Avenue? I live in Gloucester. I want to go to my shop. I, I, I have to go around because I can't leave Thatcher Road and go to Eastern Avenue. It just doesn't seem to make any sense to me. And we came here and spoke at the ONA meeting we never got invited to speak again when they had their other meeting. I bring other people that are constituents because they never got called. Mr. Gigoloni, did you get notified? I'm speaking in half of a close personal friend of mine, Mr. Perry, who has property on Witham Street, and I just don't understand it. Thank you, and I'll let everybody else speak. Thank you. Hello, my name is Zachary Kennedy. I live at 13 Fenley Road. I have also been a resident of Gloucester my entire life. Um, I have also been involved in the trucking and industrial aspects of Gloucester, um, basically since I was a small man riding around in his truck. And I can personally inform you that when I sat here at the last ONA, the first initial complaint about Wyndham Street was speed. And I would be happy to take Mr. Memhard or anybody else in a truck 
and I can guarantee you that you will not be at any sort of speed on a road with such twists and turns. I can also tell you that if you divert traffic around, and like my father said, go through the lights, come down Bass Ave to go all the way back to Thatcher Road, that there's four or five telephone poles that are also rather tight. So if you want to limit us to one, you're just going to suscept us to another one. And I will also like to remind, ladies and gentlemen of the council, that trucking and just about anything you need is brought to you by truck, whether it's Amazon, mail, anything. So the more you want to limit, the more you're going to drive up cost, inconvenience, everything else. So thank you for listening. I appreciate your time. Hello. Hello. Right. My name is Vito Ciacoloni. Uh, I actually own three properties on Witham Street. Um, there's one major flaw in this uh, amendment or this ordinance that's being put forward. Um, extensive business is a stark line. There's a bright line there between extensive business, EB district, and the R10 district. And we've missed a big part of it on the opposite side of the street. I own 14 Witham Street and 10 Witham Street, the mini storage, um, primarily. But I purchased that property in 1997 from Chip Hagstrom, the Hagstrom company. That was a notorious gravel yard. Um, it was always used as a contractor yard. I still own heavy equipment. I store my equipment there and I do my own work there. So we, we're, we've, right now we're, we're ending at nine, which is the parking lot now. It used to be the oil tanks, um, but there's at least 300 feet of frontage going further down the street that we're missing with this ordinance completely. And that's, that's commercial property. It's zoned commercial, it's been used commercial and, it, and I have a grandfathered right to have a contractor's yard. So that's one problem. There's no question that um, typical homeowner personal vehicles operate very quickly going around those turns all the time. There's not much of a sidewalk, but from a, from a Gloucester perspective, it's a throughway. It goes from Thatcher Road to um, Eastern Avenue, 127. This timber line in, in, a, in a complete industrial park on the other side of the street. The city DPW is going to be using that. That's going to be a tough thing. That's a tough road to turn around and make a block like that. But at a minimum, you would have to continue this because the, the ordinance is saying we're stopping it at the commercial uh, residential line and it misses by a lot. So that would, at a minimum, have to be corrected. But I think you need to really think about you know, no residential district wants to have large vehicles running through it. They've always had that. But as, you know, gentlemen that do, I don't drive a big truck, um, but people that do, that's not a road to be driving fast on. It isn't for a big truck, and they don't generally. But people do fly around there, especially in the summer. And if you're walking on the street, it's dangerous all around. Maybe we should think about sidewalks or a sidewalk on Witham Street or widening some of the street in certain areas. I don't think the answer is to have that big of an impediment to the to businesses. But at a minimum, we need to straighten out the addresses. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in opposition? Anyone online? Not that they have their hand up, no. Do we have any communications? There are none. Questions from counselors? Councilor Nolan. Microphone. How you doing, Vito? So one, one part of this in question is to stipulate that we, we can make changes in this. Um, and some of the changes we had talked about was to include the areas of business that you three rent, use, and own. Um, we went with number nine because that was the, the map of where the oil tanks were. Um, but you're saying 10 to 14 or 10 to 12 is your property, which is another 300 feet further. Um, if we had changed it from number nine to number 12 to gain that extra 300 feet, that would allow all commercial use from Thatcher Road to 
that end of your property where the contractor's yard and Chip Hagstrom's property was a large piece of property off of Eastern Avenue continued down on to Witham. Um, the 15,000 GVW is more because so many vehicles, it used to be a two and a half ton, you know, law is what they looked for for non-commercial. My pickup truck weighs more than two and a half tons. Your pickup weighs more than two and a half tons. Every single thing that they own weighs more than two and a half tons. Um, but if we move that over, and there's also an exemption this for service vehicles. So service vehicles would be allowed to service the rest of Witham Street, Stocknot Heights, and so on and so forth. So that would allow UPS, DPW, oil trucks, gas trucks, houses being delivered, uh, and any service vehicle coming to and from places on Witham Street. So that would mean it wouldn't affect any of your businesses for people that rent from you or, or have businesses on Witham Street in that area would still be able to use Witham Street. It would restrict, let's say, Bentley Warren from pulling from Thatcher Road onto Witham to making it to Pond Road. But as we all know, Pond, I don't know what's going to happen down the end of Pond Road because Butman's getting rid of his property. Um, but one of the other things after speaking, well, I'll, I'll let you, I'm asking that question because I'll go into discussion later. That was the actual question, is would that be something that you guys would be all right moving that down to the other piece of property, gaining the other 300 feet, and for us to make an amendment to this? Or are you just flat out totally against not doing anything and leaving Witham Street the way it is? Microphone. It's a little tighter. It's a little closer to you. It's on, but it's not. You got to right into it. No, it could have done. The only last okay. chance. They were independent issues in, in my mind. The, the one is just that somebody missed the, the line of extensive business to R10, and it goes up to 14. Um, 10, 12, and 14 is the, the old Chip Hagstrom frontage that we've owned since 97. And it's contractor yard uh, grandfathered there. So I still have my equipment on and off and stuff like that. So it wouldn't meet the 15,000. It's not service vehicle. That would be business up to 14. So I, I think the bright line would be the EB line, right? The extensive business zoning line for that independent issue. The part about the traffic is more about, as I'm, I also own residential property on, on, on Witham Street. That road is no worse than most roads, and it's a really important connection point between that side of getting to Rockport and, and this side of getting to Rockport, right? Between South Street, Thatcher Road, and, and um, Eastern Ave. So I'm not speaking on behalf of my business. I just, I, you say Bentley Warren, those tractor trailers pulling up, trying to get around that hairpin turn on Witham Street. I don't know of a more dangerous intersection than the one between Pond Road uh, Witham Street, I do it every day, and it's it's scary sometimes. You almost need a loop there. Um, th there's there's four-way traffic at high speeds all the time. So there are times when people at busy times of day where you see large trucks, you know, go out and go that way and go all the way to Thatcher Road. It's flat. You're not, you're not dealing with trying to get up over that hill. So it, it's really just as a citizen on their, on speaking on their behalf, I don't know if the benefit outweighs the, the you know, the, the detrimental part of these people trying to do their business. It's always been used for that, is what, what I'm saying. Excellent. Thank you, Vito. And if you guys don't mind, if Mr. Kennedy could speak on the same question. Um, oh, still not on. Maybe. The, the boundary you're calling the tank farm, there's three more pieces of property. That oil tank farm property runs all the way to Mr. Aiello's house, which is right on the bad corner. So if someone wanted to develop the tank farm and take the tanks down, that's all commercial property all the way to um, Aiello's house. Just to make it clear, if you're gonna move, if you're gonna move the line, the line's gonna be almost halfway down Witham Street. Anybody know what Tom Aiello's actual address is? Is that is that I, I don't know the number off the top of my head. Seventeen. 
the 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 more the point is we don't want to start to set a precedent that if I'll take my business for instance I'm coming down Thatcher Road I just made a delivery on Salt Island Road which you want to change that speed limit to my next delivery is on Taz Lane I don't have the legal right to go down Witham Street now if I was to be involved in, a, in an accident and they research my history, are they going to say, Mr. Kennedy, your insurance company is not going to pay. You didn't belong on Witham Street. That road's posted for you not to come off of Thatcher Road and drive to Easton Avenue to go to my next delivery. By law, if you post the road, now I'm supposed to go to Barn Lane, which is a private road, which could be the next road that you decide to close. Now either I go to Marina Drive, which would be the next road that you would want to close. So now I'm going all the way through the Bass Avenue lights instead of cutting up the road. That's my theory. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Questions for the... Yeah, questions. Um, what constitutes vehicle weight... Um, vehicle. I, I, I'm not a trucker. I don't know big trucks, but I mean, I've seen you driving the old truck around. That's a big truck to me. <laughs> you have to come to the mic. Sorry. It's got to be on the road. My personal vehicle is an F-450, which weighs 15,000 pounds. My own personal drive that I ride every day. Yes. Pickup truck. So a one ton dump truck that you see landscapers driving is, is over the limit. Um, if I could ask a question to the chair to Council Memhard. Um, what's, what's the problem that we're solving here tonight? I mean, I, I guess one of the questions is we don't have any representation from residents who were concerned about this issue enough to show up tonight. And I don't always count that as being the, the, the reason why they didn't show up is whatever. But, but there is concern to me when I look at this that they brought up is that we're just shifting the problem to another street. And eventually we're going to have those neighbors here expecting that road to be shut down and on down the road. So what exactly is it we're trying to solve tonight? Uh, you know, I appreciate all the questions and points have been made here. Um, I was approached by Matt Coons and the Witham Street Residential Association to try and address uh, the traffic and the speeding and the, the heavy vehicular traffic passing through, using it as a cross through. Uh, several accidents that occurred where vehicles were speeding and uh, one lost control and crossed someone's stone wall and, and ended in, up in their yard down at the Thatcher's, Thatcher's Road end of things. Is that a truck or a vehicle? That was a vehicle, I believe. So, you know, the last stretch of Thatcher's Road, if it's not flooded, or, or Witham Street, if it's not flooded, can be a bit of a raceway uh, for people who, but I'm not saying it's necessarily commercial vehicles. So this is one step out of a whole measured a uh, program that the Witham Street Association was looking at to try and control uh, the speed. Another one was to have a, a, a light at the Thatcher's at the Essex Avenue intersection that you were just describing at, at Pond Road, Eastern, uh, Avenue. Eastern, Avenue. Eastern Avenue and Pond Road uh, by the corner of the cemetery and uh, Common Crow. Uh, so this is just one step, and uh, they erroneously, you know, we. we uh, Vehicles are heavier than they were, so the original motion was two and a half ton, which is, is very modest, and was corrected by the traffic commission in their review to seven and a half ton, 15,000 vehicle weight. Uh, I did reach out to the people who've contacted me um, yesterday, notify them about tonight's meeting. Uh, they said they would try and be present, and apparently they're not online at this time. But this has been ongoing. This is one step towards trying to improve the quality of life and the danger to property and, and people uh, in that neighborhood. Questions? Councilor Benson. Mr. Kennedy, I, I was wondering if you could elaborate a little further on, you said the danger of setting a precedent. Could you just move, go a little forward on that? Uh, it's a simple, it's a simple one because, so let's just say, for example, now you live on Marina drive. So you catch wind that, oh, we posted Witham street, no trucks. Well, I don't want to listen to trucks go by my house at six o'clock in the morning because 
I feel I'm entitled to not have to listen to that. So now, six months from now, we come to the same meeting and we say, well, we don't want to have to be diverted. Now we can't go on to Marine Drive. Now it's going to be the next street and the next street and the next street. Borderline, like Mr. Nolan said, nobody wants to listen to big trucks go by. We all get it. We all have personal lives. But the fact of the matter is, is that we all enjoy things that we enjoy because they're brought to you by somebody else that brings them to you. Thank you very much. And I'd like to also clarify that, like the accident he said, it's it's all speed related. There's not one of us here that agrees that we all want to we all want to be safe. We all want to go home. Wait, they we all want to. There's not one of us that drives unsafe, but it's a fast paced society. We all see people drive way too fast. I agree. I've been working at my shop. People come racing by in their own cars, but. 20 miles an hour in a truck looks a lot faster than it is because it's loud, it's big, whereas 40 miles an hour in a car seems normal. We're all guilty. You'll be driving down 128, you look down, you're doing 80. It's, cars are faster. It's technology. Thank you. Any other questions? Went online. We already did that, but not with their hand up for this public hearing. And we do we already ask if there was communications? There are no communications on this matter. Any more questions from counselors? Close the public hearing. Have the committee report. Ready. So um On a motion by Councilor Nolan, seconded by Councilor Grace, the Ordinance Administration Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend the City Council amend the Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Article 5, Stop and Stand in and Park in Division 1, General Section 22173, Operation of Trucks, Trailer Trucks, and Other Commercial Vehicles by adding Witham Street from the end of 9 Witham Street oil tanks to Thatcher Road, no vehicles over 15,000 GVW except for service vehicles. Um, I so move. Second. Motion was made by Councillor Nolan, seconded by Councillor Grow. Discussion. Councillor Nolan. All right, so there's so many issues in Gloucester. It, the city's 400 years old. Um, we li listen to a lot of concerns and you hear people talk and you, you, you speak with them. You speak to different departments to find out what's going on and what's happening. And um, in this case, the accidents have been all passenger cars. Um, I'm a class A truck driver myself. And I used to drive on Witham Street quite a bit in a class A, not a class B vehicle actually at the time. We used to buy a lot of fuel um, down there when I worked at Wolf Hill. Serviced a lot of people and so on and so forth. There is exceptions for service vehicles and the GBW, which is a lot of people don't understand what, what it is and how low it is in the two and a half ton zones. Um, I spoke to our DPW director for a while about this and he really doesn't support any restrictions on commercial vehicles because a lot of them, Apple go aren't upheld. You can't legally enforce them. Um, you have people that have rights to get goods to their homes. You have people that want to have a larger vehicle. And if it's within the GVW of parking overnight, you can keep it there, but there's no reason to stop someone from coming to your house in a vehicle. Um, but in this particular case with Witham Street, the, the road, I understand, is very narrow. But the problem is that Barn Lane, as you had put out, it's not that you can't drive on it. It's that there may come a time where you will not be able to drive on it. Barn Lane is a private piece of property. It, it's not a road. It's not a private road. It's, it's private property. And there's a verbal agreement between the property owner and the city of Gloucester that it can be used as a pass-through. So at any given time, Barn Lane could be taken off of the stock of an access road between Thatcher and East Main, and, um, 
Eastern Ave. Then the other exception is Marina Drive. Now, Marina Drive also is a, a public road, but it's a very wide public road, but it has very dangerous access to Eastern Avenue as well. But it doesn't mean that accessing Thatcher Road from Eastern Avenue would be a problem. And what I see happening is what we consider in this business kicking things down the road is that what um, Mr. Kennedy Zach had said is that, and Bob, if you take away Witham Street, then more people are going to be using Barn. And if Barn gets taken out of the picture, then everybody's going to be using Marina. And then Marina's going to want to ask us to do the same thing. And then now trucks are driving all the way around Bass Avenue. And then now they're going to try to shoot down Hart Street because they're not going to want to go to the East Nav lights or the Bass Ave lights. So now they're going to shoot down Hart Street on another blind intersection coming onto Eastern Avenue. So I, I, I see where the neighbors are going with this, but I, I, I think as my concern for the whole city and the best result is to keep all access open to minimize all the areas for everybody to have a right to use. And especially since there's been no known accidents with commercial vehicles on Witham Street that we can find. Um, so with that being said, as much as I, I have a, a, a feel for the constituents and the people of Witham Street, um, I will not be supporting this tonight. Council Worthley. I'd like to make an amendment to this motion where we have um, nine Witham Street and to make an amendment to change it to 17 Witham Street, and I so move. Second. Discussion on the amendment. I think that, sorry, man. Councilor Worthley. Um, I think Mr. Giglione made a good point about the extensive business district and where it changes to R10. And so um, that it just makes common sense to at least, if we're going to do this, to at least have it be where the commercial vehicles are allowed to be to begin with. So that's why I make that motion. Any more discussion on the amendment? Councilor Gilman. Yeah, I, I won't be supporting this because I feel like making this occur further down the road doesn't help us solve the problem that we're thinking of. So I won't be supporting this amendment. I was going to say pretty much the same thing. Yeah. No, Councilman Nolan. Uh, on the amendment, it was something I thought about, um, but with the whole order, as a proportion, I can't support it, so I, I don't think it's worth amending at this time. Any more discussion on the amendment? Councilor Worthley? Worthley? The point would be, if you, you can still vote no on the main motion, right? But if it does pass, it would be less impactful. Okay. All right. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, the amendment? All those opposed? No. Passes Fails. eight to well. zero. Fails. Fails. Eight, one. eight to one. Yeah. One to eight. One to eight. Sorry. Going backwards. We're in the backwards zone now. I speak on the main. On the main motion, uh, discussion on the main motion. Councilor Grow. He had his hand up. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I. I, I too am not gonna support this. I, I. With all deference to Councillor Memhard, I know the travails of being a ward councillor and, and the requirements and the needs to try to reach a solution to a set of concerns for an individual neighborhood. And you know, you're great at that. I appreciate that. Um, but I think, as as Councillor Nolan has said, I think what we're what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the the issue from one neighborhood to the next neighborhood to the next neighborhood to the next neighborhood. And I don't see how we're we're improving anything here in, in terms of long term and that, that's why i always ask what's what's the problem we're trying to fix and if if the problem we're trying to fix is to move the problem somewhere else then we haven't really solved the problem we've just shifted to a new set of a new a new set of public hearings that we're going to have in a couple of months so um i appreciate your effort and i i i really appreciate the need to work with with constituents and try to re resolve their their complaints but their complaints sound like that they're more related to the challenge of getting onto Witham Street 
at Eastern Avenue mm -hmm. and the speed at which I drive down. I mean, most people drive down Witham Street. Um, we don't, we don't, we, we should be looking maybe to find a way to, to manage that somehow. I mean, uh, that's typically just enforcement, you know, but especially during the summer, I can't imagine, you know, having to deal with Barn Lane and, and, and all of trying to get trucks down with, you know, we've had much better traffic in the, in the summertime than we had previously, but it still becomes an issue. And I think that uh, if we start adding trucks to Barn Lane and, and Marina Drive, we're going to hear from it pretty quick. So thank you. Council Benson. Um, thank you. And um, first, um, thank the vi Vice President Nolan for that information and providing someone who doesn't know about the tons and the trucks, et cetera. And I also want to thank all three of you for coming and staying this long. It's pretty late. Um, I will not be supporting this. And I think the argument with the precedent really is what is weighing on me that I think that this could set a dangerous precedent that could affect many of you folks. So thank you. Councilor Gilman. Thank you, Councilor. So I lived on Cliff Road and Briar Neck for 29 years, so I know every one of these roads, every crossover road um, with my eyes closed. And I am concerned with the residual effect of pushing this down. I think the left turn coming down Barn Lane is, is a tough turn for trucks. If it's icy, it's a mess. I mean, people go straight through that that um, intersection at times. I think that it's just going to exacerbate the issue. So um, I won't be supporting it. I appreciate you coming and staying late at our meeting. And um, I, I think that um, there could be some enforcement tools that we could use, like I'm continue, I will continue to advocate for more of those electronic speed signs um, as I did in last year's budget. I will continue to advocate because I think that they're helpful for cars that are just going too fast, um, but that's that's for the budget season. So anyway, thank you. And, um, and thank you, Council Memard, for bringing this up because you do represent your constituents well. Appreciate it. Um. Councilor Memmeyer, then Councilor Grace. I would just like to thank the folks that spoke tonight. I'm sorry that the people that reached out to me from that from uh, Witham Street uh, were unable to make uh, to come through. They they spent a lot of time with the traffic commission, um, but they weren't here tonight to advocate on their own behalf. The road currently is posted 20 miles per hour, so as you've all pointed out, it, it comes down to enforcement as much as anything else. This has been one step by the local residential community on Witham Street to try and address safety issues in their neighborhood. And I've done my best to try and respond to that in a way that seemed to make sense. Um, uh, but it's, it's complicated. There's a lot of development going on, residential and commercial. Eastern Avenue is particularly becoming more of a problem because of residential homes on the far side of Eastern Avenue that don't have a sidewalk crossing to get to the beach. And the traffic to Rockport on Eastern Avenue is, is increasing all the time. It's just, it's an amazing challenge. Uh, and we have to be conscious of the impacts that these, this traffic and this congestion and this development is having on quality of life and safety. And uh, there aren't sim simple answers here. We have limited range of, of options here. And this was one that we wanted to explore and consider. And I, I just thank you all for your consideration. Thank you. Councilor Grace. You know, I, I absolutely um, understand the concerns of the neighborhoods, but um, this is a zero sum game. It hurts a business and it does nothing to increase the safety in the neighborhood. You know, it's, it's, um, people make, need to take personal responsibility that live on that street, you know, visitors on that street. Um, you know, I, in my experience going through there, I, I kind of avoid it because it is kind of a, um, a treacherous road to, to travel upon, but it's usually people that get angry about the traffic on run road and, and head over to the next road. And there's a lot of road rage involved. And I, I don't think that this amendment, although I appreciate what you're saying, I don't think it will do anything to fix it. So I will not be supporting it. Thank you. Also worthy. Yes, thank you. So I try to make the amendment to include more commercial property there. Uh, so I respect the challenges that this could pose for the people who own businesses there. Um, but I also walked and knocked on every door on Witham Street, Starknot Heights, Joseph Way, all Oxford Road, Beechcroft Road, and the number one concern people had was there's no sidewalk, there's blind corners, 
people drive too fast. It's not, not commercial people driving, it's just people generally drive too fast. There's no crosswalk on Thatcher Road. Um, sorry, there's a crosswalk. There's no median, what do you call it? Um, that's what I'm looking for. Fence that blocks so people can walk safely on there. It's very unsafe, and I don't want to blame businesses for that. It's across the board, it's unsafe. So if this is one measure that Council Memhart has been working, and, and even though the residents aren't here tonight, you represent those residents. The Traffic Commission voted for this. O&A o &A voted three to nothing, so that I came here thinking, okay, there's three councils who reviewed this in detail and said this is important. I respect you've got different perspectives today, but that vote came there. Um, I wish we had extended it a little further. Um, you've got exceptions for service, service vehicles. You have exceptions for uh, oil trucks, DPW trucks. I mean, Amazon delivery trucks. I think all of those things. And the last thing is, Barn Lane has no residential addresses on it. There's two curb cuts. Nugent Farm and Shaw's. It's a tough intersection, it's a tough street, but if, even though it's a private road, uh, it's listed as a, a municipal, a, a private road in our city of Gloucester list, so I don't know if they could shut off traffic on Barn Lane randomly. They have no, no access for residents or businesses. Uh, as, as per se to the DPW director, uh, it is private property. There's a, a verbal you know, you can use it type thing, but for the most part, it's, it's different it's, than our other private roads with public access. It, yeah, well, we there's two roads that are very weird in the city of Gloucester. One is Barn Lane, and the other one is Ryan Road. Ryan Road is owned by Magnolia Shores Condo Association. It's not owned by the city. It's not owned by the residents of Ryan Road. Barn Lane is Barn Lane by by name for fire purposes, but the road itself is 100% owned by the supermarket property. So, and it's, it can be shut down anytime they want to, it's their property. They'd have to allow, they have an agreement with Nugent Farm and they would allow them to use it as they wanted, I'm sure. As far as so, we know, residential uh, commercial vehicles are allowed on Barn Lane until- they, Yes, as yes, but it could, it could stop, it's private property. And they wouldn't stop it, I'm sure, because it would affect their business. It's, People coming from one, right. you know, so. Did you that answer? I'm good. That's like Grace. Um, just to just to speak to um one of your comments, you know, I didn't hear the side right. of the story from these gentlemen out here, and part of the public hearing is so that we can hear, we can hear others' perspectives, which gives us the right to, you know, to view it differently and to you know, and different perspectives. So I, you know, while I appreciate your comment, I also just you know. And hearing what these gentlemen have to say, it, it just um, gives me pause to, to really think and really reconsider it. And let me just be clear. Everyone has a right to change mm -hmm. their mind at any point. I don't, I don't, didn't mean that, but the traffic commission reviewed this. Yeah, let's keep on topic. To Thank you. Any other comments? My turn, I guess. Um, yes, I, w I was sitting in on ONA um, on this, and I did vote to move it forward, but just to move it forward to this to this uh, stage of the uh, of the process, I saw it as a, a speeding issue. I didn't see this necessarily as the solution. I saw it raising a whole host of issues for particularly the businesses down there, but also the enforcement of it is next to impossible because and you're going to have all the delivery vehicles that are on a time crunch that are, um, you know, your Amazon trucks, your UPS, your FedEx, they're all gonna be, they're all exempt and they're going to be scooting down the road. I live on a, on a very narrow road myself and you have to get, you have to find a spot off the shoulder to get to to allow a, a big truck get by, but that's just the way it is. And, um, and speeding was a major issue when we repaved um, our road and Coming to find out, a lot of the speeding was actually the people who lived there, or people visitors of the people. Um, I think that I think Councillor Gilman's point of the lighted, flashing speed limit um, reminders to people is is a really good idea on roads like this. People's property and their walls, as you guys are so well aware of, are right on the road, and uh, and it is a difficult road for you guys to navigate. So you certainly are not bombing up and down there in your in your larger vehicles. Um, I do see this as a, as a solution that that is not going to fix anything. 
And um, and I think that it is a 20 mile an hour now. We really probably can't improve on that. So I think just signage is is our next best effort for us to lobby um, for th these roads that come forward like this that are passed through roads that need to really have that reminder. Because I know when I see one, the one in Rockport and stuff, it's like, oh, you know, and I look in the rear view mirror quick. Um, but, uh, but anyway, um, that's my two cents on this. Thanks. And if there's no more questions, we can have a vote on this. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. No. No. I'm... <laughs> All those in favor? All those opposed? Aye. Aye. I know. No. No. You can the issue no. now, Val. Darn no. It. <clears throat> All right, the motion fails one to eight. Thank you, guys. I'm sorry. Well, fix your dam. I must. I think I blame Dylan on all this. All right. <laughs> saying yes and no. The next public hearing oh, is public hearing 2024. All right, quiet down, council. Next public hearing is 2024-007 City Council Order 2024-004 to amend Gloucester Code of Ordinances Chapter 22 Traffic and Motor Vehicles Article 6 Traffic Schedules Section 22-270 Prohibited Parking at All Times and Section 22-291 Towway Zones by adding Washington Square for its entire length no parking of any vehicle with a gross vehicle weight of over 15,000 pounds. Um, two councilors sponsored this. Uh, Councilor Benson, did you have anything you wanted to say? Well, anyone speaking in favor? Anyone online? They are, but no one has their hand up. Would Councilor Benson, would you like to speak to this? Did you sponsor this also? No, I did not. Just Council Worthley. There was there's there's something else. Okay. All right. I can speak on it though. Councilor Grace. Okay. Um, uh, Councilor, I have a procedural point of order. I believe we should wait until Council Worthley comes back so he can participate in the public hearing, seeing that he was a co-sponsor. Yep. Yeah. But. It's it's a public hearing and. Um, oh, we can go to speaking in opposition. Is there anyone with their hand raised to speak in opposition? No. Is there any communications? There are none. All right. Now we'll wait for Councilor Worthley to. But Councilor Grace, you can start. Uh, you know, basically, what it is is. Um, extremely narrow roads are 400 year old cow paths that go through some of these neighborhoods and there are some commercial vehicles that have been parking or consistently park up there um, and it makes it extremely difficult for even just a passenger vehicle to traverse up there um, and when we had the ONA meeting we had members of fire department um, and if there were ever if there's something some type of an emergency up there they cannot bring their big apparatus up there because these vehicles block the road um, so they it requires them to bring smaller stuff or to to you know lug stuff up from um, Washington Street so it's basically it's a safety issue uh, just to allow people, you know, for the neighborhood to be able to get through there without, you know, um, accidents or hindrance. You know, if there's snow on the ground, in addition to your 15,000 vehicles um, uh, blocking the road, it just makes things really, really difficult on a safety a safety perspective. Councilor yeah. Worthley, do you have anything to add? Uh, simply, first, thank you. And I think Councilor Grace has handled this really well. Uh, I think we both co-sign this order, or I introduced, I can't remember which one it was. I introduced this order. It was um, brought to me between the preliminary election and the final election, um, Councilor, Ward 3 Councilor candidate, Jason Hakes, who didn't win the preliminary election. He said, this is something that was plaguing the neighborhood. So walked around, drove around with Councilor Grace after she won. We looked at it. Um, the traffic commission agreed unanimously that it's a safety issue. Um, I think ONA did as well, as well, and I think the residents that live there will appreciate. Um, and I also want to thank Councillor Nolan for helping me craft this because 
initially I proposed um, no commercial vehicles, but people drive small vehicles commercially. Um, so we said the goal was to eliminate the large oversized vehicles that make it hard to pass the, uh, in that very tight neighborhood. So I think between the, the fire safety and the protection and, and people having to walk into the street in such a wide trucks, um, this will make it a lot safer. So I ask the council to um, consider it. Thank you. Um, we don't really have anyone to ask questions of, so I will close the public hearing and uh, we will have the committee report. Councilman Nolan. Opposed by Council. Second. Motion was made by Councilor Nolan, seconded by Councilor Worthley. Discussion. Councilor Grow. I just, I, um, we, we, we went over questions quickly. I thought we were going to have a second to do that, but I do have a question, um, and, and this goes back to the question that I asked before, which is. There's, there's clearly a problem to be solved here. Um, is Washington Square that much narrower than, than adjacent streets? And what do we do about the neighborhood business uh, businesses that are on that end of the street? How do we deal with that? Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask you a second question first. The neighborhood business has access from Washington Street. It, you don't have to go to Washington Square to get to that business. Um, every, every property on... My, my computer's not working for me. There is a couple. What's that? But anyway, go ahead. Well, Washington Square, which is a triangle, actually. Washington Square. Driveway is at the end of Washington Square. Like you're not having to, again, this isn't about access, it's about parking. So you're not mm -hmm. going to be parking in front of the driveway, right? So that wouldn't change. Um, and then your first question was, well, how is this street any different than any others? Well, I guess the question is: is is are these are these cars then going? Are these trucks are then going to be parking on Granite Street and and Summer Street and, and other adjacent Pan Mansfield Street? I mean, would so and will they cause the same kind of problem? Yeah, I mean, I think it's always a fair question. I mean, this street's different now because it's in front of us, right? And you could argue like they'll go somewhere else, but we're talking. Okay, I don't know the potential high number, but we're talking about three or four big trucks that are on the street, and they're dump trucks, they're landscaping trucks. And yes, they'll have to go somewhere else. Um, obviously, Washington Street is not that much further away. It could be 20 feet further away. They'll have to walk a little bit. Um, they could maybe park at St. Peter's. Or, you know, that's a little bit further to walk. But I think when it came down to the fire safety issue, especially when um, Fire Officer uh, Mike Mitchell said we would be bringing our smaller apparatus, which means that they wouldn't have the, the big pump truck to get you know further in. And, and that's one of the neighborhoods where if if one house is on fire, it very quickly could be a large number of houses. So um, again, I think we're talking about three to four current trucks that are parking there that make it really difficult. And if, if you had a chance to drive it, and I think Councilor Gross may have lived in that neighborhood at one point, uh, it's it's tight, and it's tighter now than it's ever been. So um, a number of residents, starting with, uh, I say Councilor uh, Jason Hakes, who brought it to us, um, lives there and is concerned. So um, that's why we brought it here and hope that you consider supporting it. Just your question. Councilor Nolan. Sorry. So this isn't more of a question. It's just, I've actually went down and did a, a bunch of drive-bys on this particular situation. Um, at the beginning, where you have store 24, and then you have the next property after the smoke shop, there's a telephone pole that makes it almost impossible for even my pickup truck to drive down without folding mirrors in 
if there's a, a, a vehicle wider than a passenger car on the other side of the road. And as just a visual, the street itself and its width is obviously a lot less than Granite Street, all right? Um, and the parking is so tight here, but what's going on is you have people bringing commercial vehicles to their home. Now, if they're over 15,000 GBW, they wouldn't be allowed to even park on their property, but they could still park on the street. But by changing it to 15,000 GBW, you take less chance of some of these box trucks and dump trucks that have got wider mirrors, wider bodies on them, and making it harder for the fire department to go down. If you left here tonight and drove down Washington Square, you're probably going to see at least two or three vehicles that are parked there that are commercial trucks. And it's not the GVW per se, it's the width of the vehicle mm -hmm. that causes to be the problem. The GVW is more, it's easier to say 15,000 GVW than commercial because suppose you're a salesperson for Frito-Lay and you get a, a, a Toyota Yaris. Mm -hmm. It's registered commercial, it, it belongs to a company. So that's why we try to put the GVW into it. As far as the notifications for police to understand when they run the plate, it tells them the GVW of the vehicle on, on what it is. So yeah, it's it it doesn't mean people are going to get tickets, and it, you know, it's just hopefully they get tickets and they find another way because they can park on Washington Street, they can park on Granite Street. You know, there's there's places they can go, um, but it, it is very dangerous here for a fire safety issue. And that's what I'm concerned of, especially when the fire department specifically says there's times where they may only be able to get a pickup truck through and start laying lines. So that's my, my concern on this. Um, and you can, you can, and you probably will leave here tonight and look at that. Because it, it's pretty obvious just by driving down the street. You definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Gilman. I will be supporting this because I believe it's a public safety matter. Thank you. Anybody else? I would just say that uh, I am familiar with this neighborhood. I had a longtime friend that lived down there with his wife, and uh, I used to go visit him, uh, and it was a tough place to park any which way, um, and uh, I would support this. Thank you. Anybody else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, nine to zero. Thank you, everybody. Next order of business. Let's see, public hearing 2024-008. It's City Council Order 2024-005 to amend Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Article 6. Traffic Schedule, Section 22-270, Parking Prohibited at All Times. In section 22-291 towaway zone by deleting Prospect Street southerly side beginning 55 feet from its intersection with Marchant Street for a distance of 37 feet in an easterly direction and adding Prospect Street southerly side beginning at its intersection with Marchant Street for a distance it should be of 105 feet in an easterly direction. We will open the public hearing. Um, anyone to speak in favor? Sure. From where you are. Is that okay? Yes. No, I don't. I, yes, it, please. You, you're, you, this is your. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Councilor Benson, did you sign this with me? It's been, it's been a while. Did you co-sign this one with me? I did, yeah. I co-signed with you. Okay. And you, can speak, you can speak in favor and then. Um, Thank you. I appreciate I it. Say. Never want to step on toes. Thank you. Yeah, you brought it forward. Yep. Brought it okay, forward. we got that squared away. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I did provide photos for this uh, at uh, the traffic commission. I didn't know if they made it into the packet. They didn't make it a packet. Okay. You saw them. Yeah. All right, let's okay. Just... So this is, if you're coming from, let's say you're coming from Prospect Street from Pleasant Street and you're going towards our Lady of Good Joy's Church in Destinos. Marchant Street's on the right. There's a, um, there's no parking for part of that, but before Destino's restaurant, there's parking allowed there. And it's a very, very narrow street. 
um, especially around that bend. The traffic commission had suggested that we go further than 105 feet, um, but then what we decided was we'll bring that in potentially as a second separate amendment. Um, but this makes it so that when you're coming around the bend right before the church, it's, if you don't, I mean, I feel like I'm going to get an accident even when there aren't cars parking. But this makes it a little easier. The person who specifically asked this of me has had his windows, his mirror hit five times, um, and it's problematic. So I brought it forward on behalf of the resident there, connected with Councillor Benson, who I think visited the spot himself, and we measured it out, and the traffic commission voted for it unanimously, and like to have the council do the same. Thank you. Ed? Um, pretty much, I think, what uh, Council Worthley said is pretty much my thinking and what you brought it to my attention. I went out there, looked at it, and I think the changes also are reflective of state parking regulations. So we're going in line there. And again, like that blind spot right as you leave March and, and go on to um, Prospect Street, it's, it's, very, it's very tricky. So having a car there um, really shouldn't be there. All right, anyone to speak in opposition? Oh, was there anyone online to uh, speak in favor? No. Anyone to speak in opposition online? Uh, questions? Communications? There are none. Questions? What's the, uh, what's the net loss of parking spaces on there? From what I see, I think one spot. That's what I'm, my, understanding of going out there and I think um, Council Worthley you would, you would confirm that it's one spot so it's, it could be two because people park in a strange way there like they, it's like one and a half and they make two cars out but it's it's essentially one spot because there already is a no parking that really yeah yeah like where the sign is they cut they're, they're, they're not at the sign they're past the sign so it's Council and Nolan so again we have two two ordinances in the books for parking it's 22 feet and 18 feet. 18 feet for a compact spot that's only done by special city council permit. 22 feet is a legal spot. The distance between the curb of Merchant Street plus the 22 feet brings you to a Destino's parking lot. So legally, it's one spot. Legally, right there. Thank you for that clarification. Any other questions from the councilors? I'm going to close the public hearing. Take the committee report. Amend section 22-270, prohibited parking at all times by Deleton, Prospect Street, southerly side beginning at 55 feet from its intersection with Merchant Street for a distance of 37 feet in an easterly, easterly direction and adding Prospect Street, southerly side beginning in its intersection with Merchant Street for a distance of 105 feet in the easterly direction and amend section 22-291, towway zone, by deleting Prospect Street, suddenly side by beginning at 55 feet from its intersection with Merchant Street for a distance of 37 feet in the easterly direction and adding Prospect Street, southerly side, beginning at its intersection with Merchant Street for a distance of 105 feet in the easterly direction, and I so move. Second. Motion was made by Councilor Nolan. Who seconded? Councilor Groh. Discussion. Councilor Gilman. I will be supporting this because I think it's a public safety issue. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, nine to zero. Next item, Madam Clerk. It's public hearing 2024-009, City Council Order 2024-006 to amend Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Article 6. Traffic schedule section 22 280 50 minute parking by deleting Grove Street westerly side beginning at a point 20 feet from its intersection with Washington Street 
in a northerly direction for a distance of 22 feet to amend section 22-270 parking prohibit at all times by adding Grove Street on the westerly side beginning at a point 40 feet from its intersection with Washington Street for a distance of 40 feet and amend section 22-291 towway zones by adding Grove Street on the westerly side beginning at a point 40 feet from its intersection with Washington Street for a distance of 40 feet. From the public hearing, um, those who'd like to speak in favor, I think this is Councillor Worthley, your, your uh, council order. Yes, thank you. So just for orientation, if you're coming out of Grove Street onto Washington Street, there's a stop sign there. There's also a 15 minute parking sign in the same exact spot. So if someone's parking for 15 minutes there, they're in the street, now a car behind it has to go around it and they're blocking or hitting potentially the car coming from Washington on Grove Street. The traffic commission, when this was proposed to add the 15 minute spot there three or four years ago, maybe two, three years, three or four years ago, they voted against having the 15 minute parking spot, but for whatever reason, the council then decided to add the 15 minute spot um, it's dangerous. I drive this probably six or seven times a week. It's not safe. It's not safe for the customers of the, the ice cream store. There was the, the question was raised, maybe adding another 15 minute spot on the Washington Street side. There is room to do that. I haven't put that forward, but we can discuss that at a separate time. Um, but this makes it so you're coming off of Grove Street. You can actually stop at the stop sign without crashing into a car that's parked there. Um, it should never have probably been there in the first place. So I'd like to have the council support this if we could. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor? Anyone speaking in opposition? Favor no to I was just uh, just to reiterate that, you know, that's that's my neck of the woods. And um just recently, you know, you know, about four weeks ago just as an example coming down Grove Street and there was a car parked there and I, you have to literally go on the other side of the street and you're going on to Washington Street and you know it was a time of day when it's very very busy there and you've got cars that are parked on Washington Street so you can't see what's coming and you're inching out on the wrong side of the road on Grove Street trying to get onto the you know, one of the busiest streets in our city um, and, you know, I, I almost, I had to jam my brakes on to keep from, you know, hitting the car that was coming, you know, bombing down Washington Street as I was driving on the wrong side of the road because of a parked car. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone um, online in favor? There are no hands up. Anyone speaking in opposition? Anyone online? No hands? There are no, no hands, hands raised? No. Um, any communications? There are none. Questions from counselors on the proponents? I will close public hearing. We'll have the committee report. Article six, traffic schedules as follows. Amend section 22-280, 15 minute parking by deleting Grove Street, Wesley side, beginning at a point 20 feet from its intersection with Washington Street in a northerly direction for a distance of 22 feet and amend section 22-270, parking prohibited at all times by adding Grove Street on a Wesley side, beginning at a point 40 feet from its intersection with Washington Street for a distance of 40 feet and amend section 22-291 towway zones by adding Grove Street on a westerly side beginning at a point of 40 feet from an intersection with Washington Street for a distance of 40 feet. Do you want me to read the beginning part of that again? Because they, they missed the beginning. Yeah, just, just for the very beginning. On a motion by Council Grove, seconded by Council Grace, the Ordinance Administration Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend the City Council amend the Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Article 6, Traffic Schedules, as follows. And I so move. Second. Okay, 
Motion's been made by Councilor Nolan, seconded by Councilor Worthley. Discussion? Councilor Majoita. Um, this is a safety issue, so I will be supporting this. <laughs> and it, and I a vote in the affirmative says the same thing, you know. Touché. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it, nine to zero. Thank you again. And uh, anybody else want to vote twice on it? <laughs> um, next order of business. This is for council vote, public hearing 2023-054, city council order 2023-041 to amend Gloucester Code of Ordinances, chapter 21, streets, sidewalks, and other public places by adding a new article five entitled Petition for Alteration of Private Way and this is uh, was continued from 227-24 city council meeting because of the city charter to 11C that council worthily stated. Thank you. So the public hearing has been closed. Yes. So yes. this is open for discussion. Where we are, we're um, in the discussion phase of the um, of the motion, which. Then we'll have the committee report again, I would suppose. Um, but we can have the committee report now. Yes. Motion by Zero opposed. Everybody get that? Three in favor. Okay. Three in favor, zero opposed. Recommend the city council amend the Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Chapter 21 street sidewalks and other public places by adding a new article five entitled petition for alteration of private ways as follows article five petition for alteration of private way section 2187 purpose purpose of this article is to provide a butter with private ways as defined in 2180b1 a means to petition the city council as per mgl chapter 90 section 18 to petition for regulating and accepting a private way. Section 2188, regulating parking, speed, limit, and traffic on a private way. An expense set forth in this article is subject to the availability of funding and the authorization for said funding must be made by recommendations of the mayor and the majority vote of the city council. Abutters to a private way who wish to post, stop, or yield sign, and regulate parking and speed limit on the private way shall submit a petition to the city clerk requesting city council consideration. Petition shall be signed by not less than 75% of all abutton property owners on the private way. Only one signature per abutton property. All signatures shall be verified by the city clerk. Petitioners shall use only official petition forms available from the city clerk's office upon request. C, all copies, mail-ins, and cost of postages are responsibility of the button property owners. Petitioners shall include the name and contact information for no less than three primary contact persons who shall also be a button property owners to the city clerk. D, follow a public hearing. The city council will vote on approval of actions stated on petition. This requires a majority vote of the City Council for approval. Two, adoption of special speed. Oh, oh that's, that's something else. All right, perfect. I move, right? And I so move. Second. All right, motion made by Councillor Nolan, seconded by Councillor Worthley. Um, being the proponent, I'd like to speak first on this. Um, there is some um, amendments I would like to propose. I assume that we're going to have to take them up separately. My um, my first amendment is that uh, that it be the understanding that neither handicap parking is included in this because that's under the purview of the traffic commission for section 22-37. That's not in here, but I would like that to be understood. And also um, in that same, I guess that's one amendment that that it's understood that the that the handicap is not part of this part of this amendment part of this um, motion so um, 
I'd like to make that amendment. You want to move it in second? Yeah. In second. Yeah. So moved. I second it. Okay. I made it. Council Worthley seconded. Is there any discussion? Just on the amendment? On the amendment, yeah. On the amendment. Council Worthley. Yes. First, thank you for making that amendment. And uh, if you recall, when we we're discussing this, I raised the question about what about the same rights we have for people who live on public roads where if a handicapped person wants to request that, we don't want to ask them to get 75% of their neighbors to have to sign something for that. And we wouldn't want to deprive them of the same access to government as people live on, pri on public roads. And um, that's the reason why I did 211 seats. I thought there'd be some good conversation about trying to make that and fit that, fit that amendment in. And I think it was uh, Councilor Gross and maybe Suzanne Egan who answered that we could um, amend it to not include those sorts of things. So I'm glad we have this discussion and, and I appreciate the positive change there. Councilor Gros. Just for clarification though, uh, we're amending this as a, as a matter of, of extra clarity that, and it, even if we didn't have 2237 as a, as a provision for the handicap, that wouldn't be affected one way or the other by passage of this amendment. That's but, true, uh, I just so, wanted to make sure. So we're just basically putting some language in there except yeah. for handicap, which is governed by 2237. Yeah. Okay, yes. but it doesn't change exactly. the net under, underlying ordinance at all. Right, so we would put under, um, you know, I guess, section E, or no, um, a new section, make that section D, and then, um, and then, and then make D E. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're amending this by adding D. Changing, yeah, by changing adding D e. to be what you just e. stated, and. Yes, and to be handy, handicap D to E. Handicap parking is is regulated by section twenty two dash thirty seven. So you could do that as an E. Still follows to E, and D follows to E. Okay, huh. seems like an unnecessary step though. Why can't you just make E the handicap statement? It's not subject to a vote. But Fine. Yeah, yeah, we can make E make it E. So yeah, All right, yeah. make make it E. Okay. So that's a friendly amendment. Yep. Okay. So. Friendly. On the on the amendment, any more discussion on the amendment? All right, all those in favor of the amendment. Aye. 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 All right, there's another amendment I'd like to make. I'd like to remove stop and yield sign because that is also regulated by the Traffic Commission under um, Section 2238, and I think we can just remove it. We don't have to put in any language about that. So Second. I, I, yeah. Moved it. So I moved it. Second. Councilor Gro seconded it. Discussion. Councilor Benson. Uh, thank you, Council President. So you're removing all of um, B. No. Oh. Okay. No. Just persons who wish to post stop. Persons who wish to post stop and yield signs. So abutters to a private way who wish to regulate who wish to regulate parking and speed limits. So we're getting rid of post stop and yield signs. Okay, yep, and now I okay. That's it. No. So just post stop or yield signs, those five words. I think we already moved and seconded I'll that. Move second. yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes, the amendment passes nine to zero. I have one more, everyone has patience with me. I think, or I actually have two more. I think 75%. Uh, one is only going to take one of them. I, I think 75% is a little bit um, yeah. heavy on this. That was that was taken out. I took that out of the language for betterment. Um, I think 60% is adequate here for uh, parking and, and speed limits. So I'd like to make the amendment that we change 75% um, to not less than 60%. Second. Second. All right. Moved by Councilor Gross, seconded by Councilor Nolan. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, final, <laughs> final amendment. Uh, this is how the sausage is made. Um, and where I have no less than three primary contact persons, I think you only need one contact person for this. So I think it should be um, the name. No less than one? Yeah, it can't be less yeah no. <laughs> so it's just name and contact information of a primary contact person. So I'll get rid of, um, you know, 
Move to delete no less than three. No less than three primary contact. Second. Yeah, just change person to person. All right, moved by Councillor Grow, seconded by Councillor Grow. Discussion, everybody understand? Councillor Gilman. Um, I, mm. I'm not gonna be supporting this because I, I believe that it's important to have more than one person because sometimes you have personalities in a neighborhood and I think sometimes that's a balance. So um, that's why you have 60%. I think three is, yeah, exactly. But I think three is too much, but um, I would cons But a couple. I, I would, yeah. I, I Maybe just, a couple or a few. I would just like to say uh, two uh, the, and not three. Okay. But you know what? This is the, I can vote the against motion. It. Yeah, it's fine. exactly. I'm good. Exactly. As Any more discussion on the motion? On this motion. Um, I believe Goose Cove Lane is private road. Doesn't doesn't you need four people living on a road to have any private changes? lane? Okay, yeah, yeah. But he, so he not to make it personal, but you, he he's all resident. along. He's right. all along. So if we made it two or three, he wouldn't be able to make any changes to his street. But you're saying there's no changes if this plus is four? Right. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. According to the Betterment ordinance, anyway. A betterment order. Yeah. yeah. So not according to this, but yes, yeah, according so to the You can actually can if, it's, if we so just we do could, one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, on the ordinance, on the amendment, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Opposed? No. One. Motion passes eight to one. And that's it for the amendments. Back to the main motion. Um, I guess, Councillor Nolan, you uh, want to reread it? Or? No. No, we already did all that. Mm -hmm. We already did all that. Yeah, we Special right. main motion. Yeah. Sorry. These are not the okay, you're looking for. On the for. main motion. Discussion. Councilor Worthley. Thank you, Councilor Gross, for all the work you did to bring it to us, to shepherd it through. And um, I don't believe that 211C should ever use just to stop things. I think it's, the goal is to make it better, and I feel like you did. On the motion. No, the, the motion is that the process allowed for additional research and discussion, and I think it's a better ordinance because of that. So I, um, I don't want anyone to feel shame for having ever used 211C for that purpose, and I don't myself. Thank you. I'd just like to say that these amendments were prob were in the works at the original discussion phase. It's just that I didn't get to speak yet because I was council president. I was waiting till last. All right. Um, any more discussion on the main motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. oh, okay. Sorry. Is there a safety issue? Sorry. I didn't see it on the screen. Hold that back. I'm going to support this. But I do believe that we're going to have to be sensitive to the sign budget for this year because I think we will find that there will be an increase in our sign budget, which is typically very small, maybe around thirty thousand dollars. So, but I will be supporting it. Okay. Thank you. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes nine to zero. That's Next exactly order of business <laughs> is the adoption of special speed regulation number 7969 for the public portion of Salt Island Road to 15 miles per hour for council vote. So, yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 9 to 0. All right. Now, um, councilors' discussion, individual councilors, do we go by roll call? Um, no, councilors request to the mayor. There's no individual councilors discussion. Oh, okay. Council, councilors request to the mayor. Mm -hmm. Start with Councilor Memart. I've been in communication to the mayor's office on most matters that need his help. Um, the one point I'd like to make is that uh, the follow up to the Washington, the, excuse me, the Mount Pleasant infrastructure improvement and paving project um, is underway this week. It's a final phase, which includes uh, sidewalks on both sides of Mount Pleasant, which will be great for the residents there. However, uh, since the time that National Grid marked out the gas lines and all the gas work was done connecting the main, new gas mains into the residences on uh, Mount Pleasant, uh, all the markings as to where the, that work was done were eliminated uh, with the new paving and National Grid didn't really get out there in time to remarket, I guess, is the problem. Uh, so that starting Monday morning, um, gas lines were cut because they were very shallowly placed uh, in, into service to individual homes. So that 
this has caused, caused a lot of uh, distress, distress and um, anxiety in the neighborhood. Cut gas lines are something that we don't not take seriously. Uh, and it's an ongoing problem right now, which they're working to address. But it's complicated uh, the end of what otherwise has been a successful project. Councilman Olin. Um, everything I have to say, I've worked out with the mayor's office. So uh, have a great night. Council of Worthley. Um, Worthley. I've submitted requests, and the mayor's responded to all of them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our Councilman Benson. Um, I've spoken to the mayor's office on all of my requests, and I'm good. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. And again, um, Joanne, thank you for your service to our community. You're welcome. Yeah. Count Councilor Gilman. I have nothing to add except that Joanne Sinos is awesome. <laughs> and we will always remember your legacy. And we'll see you on the beach. Thank you. Councilor Grace. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say that I um, attended last night's um, MBTA zoning session. I uh, was really delighted to see so many people there. Um, my request is, is that we have more than two um, informational sessions that people can ask questions of. I don't think two is enough. And last night's meeting at 530, I think if it had been at a later time or perhaps on a Saturday, you would have had even more people there um, to be educated. So in a nutshell, we need more discussion. That's it. Thank you. Um, Councilor Grow. Uh, the first thing is I think we should extend the meeting for another 10 minutes so that Joanne gets her full whack of the last meeting. <laughs> um, I have nothing for the mayor. I would just remind people that Friday, uh, March 29th, is uh, Vietnam Veterans Day. There'll be a wreath laying uh, at 11 o'clock at the Vietnam Memorial. At, is it Huff? Is it Huff Street? Huff Street, Huff Street. Huff Street in, in, in Stage Fort Park, Huff Avenue. Sorry. Goodness. Tough crowd. Beautiful yeah. new Vietnam Memorial. On very beautiful, Avenue. very new, very uh, appropriate Vietnam Memorial in. Rain or shine, I believe, yes. Yeah. So 11 o'clock Friday, be there. All right, I uh, just want to have a motion to adjourn. Oh, so moved. moved. Oh. Second. I just say something? Yes. Okay. Oh. Thank you very Point much. Point of order. <laughs> no. <laughs> Second. Thank you very much. I'd like much. to suspend the rules for the, uh, <laughs> for the city clerk. Thank you very much for your kind words. I will miss you. I will not be missing the alarms, the schedules, and the deadlines. Fair enough. Okay, but I'll probably be seeing you around at some events and around town and uh, definitely at Good Harbor Beach. You can't pretend that you don't know us. <laughs> okay. Well, Joanne, just make sure you don't forget to vote. Uh, <laughs> early. Joanne, Joanne are you getting oh, this wrong? Oh, Councilman Short, that we speak. Skipped you. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I just told you you were in my sights. Okay. Um, I just want to, uh, all my requests are to the mayors. I will be speaking to uh, hopefully Greg tomorrow about something else. And also, I um, just want to say um, good job of the Gloucester Education Foundation with the um, I think power play they did on Sunday. Um, it was a great event. Uh, my kids all enjoyed it. And it seemed like everyone had a good time. So thank you for all the hard work that they did for that event. We do the wave for Joanne. Bye. Ready? <laughs> yeah. I can't jump up. <laughs> but we'll wave in spirit. All right. Tick, tick. Yeah, I guess everybody's got to sign it. Motion to Motion adjourn. To Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion made by Councillor Gilman, seconded by Councillor Nolan. All those in favor? Aye. Definitely aye. Passes aye. nine to zero. There you go. Sign, sign, please. Oh, sign, sign. Oh. Sign.